What's up, Clashers? My name's Power Bang, and I'm super excited to bring you guys the Season 3 Champions War League Finals. We've got two epic clans ready to do battle to see who takes home the title. That's right, Power Bang. Howdy, guys. I'm Woody. So excited to introduce One Hive and Faked WGM. One Hive is renowned for their strategic excellence. They were Season 1 finalists, and they're going to try to claim first place this time. That's right, but not if fake WGM has anything to say about it. These guys are the favorites and have had one of the best records in the Champions War League all season long. They're going to be looking to take home their first CWL title. Clashers, my name's Power Bang. I'm here with my co-host Woody, and we are here to bring you the Champions War League Season 3 Finals. We've got two amazing clans in the studio today, five representatives from each representing 35 members all over the globe. And uh, we are right in the middle of this action to see who's going to claim the title. That's right, Power Bang. Howdy, guys. My name's Woody, and I cannot wait to see the best attacks in all of Clash of Clans, the most impenetrable bases, and which team will be crowned champion of the world. Will it be One Hive or Faked WGM? Faked WGM does currently hold the lead, 86 stars to 80, but it's anyone's game. One Hive is known for their comebacks. With that, though, Power Bang, I think we should go ahead and introduce the players. Absolutely. Never count One Hive out. We're going to introduce them first. first First, on the end, we've got Atoma, 619. 
Atoma 619 coming from San Diego, United States of America. This is not his first time. It's not his first rodeo. Last time you guys were here in season one, you fell just short against a really star strong Dark Looters Clan. What's going to be different this time around? We were going to bring our A game. We know how to work under pressure, and I think we're just going to come up on top. Awesome. Very good. Congratulations for getting this Thank far. You. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, next up, sitting next to Atoma, we have Matty J. <laughs> Matty J is a Town Hall 10 and Town Hall 11 specialist. He already has one Town Hall 10 three star this war. Matty J, what makes you so crafty at Town Hall 10? Uh, I think it's just uh, my plans. I'm good at planning, I'm good at executioning and uh, executing and just coming out on top. Perfect. Let's keep the executioning for uh, at home or something. Yeah, no, so. I, uh, maybe not. No, no, no. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> good to have you here. Next up, we've got Chris from One Hive. <laughs> Chris, I've noticed your discipline all week long, keeping the team in order. Uh, mighty young guy yourself, but man, as a war general, how are things going so far for One Hive this war? Are you happy with the current status? Um, we're doing well. We did pretty good, 10 v 11. We did okay, 9v9, and now we need to bring it home at 10v10 and land on dips. You've got two hours remaining, a yes. lot of time. Anything can happen. You guys were impressive on the Town Hall 10 versus 11 game. Yes. Best of luck on that 10v10 and 11v10 game moving forward. Thank you. Next up, we've got Lord Byron from One Hive. Thank you. Lord Byron, affectionately referred to as LB, you are one of the longest serving members of One Hive, and this is also not your first rodeo. Lord Byron appeared in season one of the Champions War League finals with One Hive. What is different this time around than the last time around? You're serving a little bit of a different role for the clan, it seems. That's right, PB. I'm, I'm serving a different role in the clan. Back in February, when we were here during the season one finals, I was doing a lot more cleanup or scout attacks so most of my attacks are really 9v10s to scout for the 10s since then i've worked really hard in fc's worked on developing a couple new strategies that really work well at 9v9 and i'm now to the point that almost all my attacks in major wars are fresh hit two nines early on hopefully bring home that six pack take a couple bases out and get us off to a good start oh, absolutely you proved that you could do just that today already securing the six pack for your clan yeah. congratulations on that and i'm sure we'll show one of those here momentarily Sounds great, thanks. All right, last but certainly not least, for one hive, the longest serving member of the clan, Pero. <laughs> Pero, you and I go way back to the very dawn of time in competitive Clash of Clans. Did you ever imagine that the game, the scene, would come this far? No, never. Back then, it was those were really, very humble beginnings, but today we're at the pinnacle of the competition. It's really, it really came a long way. That's amazing. Well, congratulations for you and your clan for being here. Thank I can't you. imagine a better clan that would be representing the face of the CWL better than One Hive. So welcome again to One Hive. And now it's time to introduce the other clan. Joining us here in the studio, we have Faked WGM. <laughs> Faked WGM had an amazing 10-1 streak in the regular season. They were the first ranked play, uh, clan in all of CWL season three. They definitely deserve their spot here today and have been fighting hard for a very long time. Let's go ahead and introduce their first player, Philip. <laughs> Philip is a Town Hall 11 player. He's a base creator and tester. Now, I know that you've played under very uh, difficult situations before. Back at home, you were used to having pressure while you played. Do you think that you're going to perform well here in the studio today? Uh, yeah. I, when I'm at home, I usually have one of my two dogs uh, trying to jump on me. I've got two kids, and usually they're making a lot of noise. And my wife is usually uh, not too happy that I'm playing. So uh, <laughs> I think that attacking in studio will be probably, probably about the same. It's You're used to having a lot same of eyes pressure. on you. Yes. Yeah. You've also traveled a lot. You've been here to Estonia before this trip today. Have you enjoyed your trip back? It's been awesome. It's been awesome. It's a different, I get to see a complete different side since we've been here in the studio and, and doing different things than just a vacation. So it's been, it's been amazing. Excellent. Well, best of luck to you, sir, today. Thank yeah. you. 
Next up, we have TTD Black. Black, you're a Town Hall 10, one of the generals of fake WGM, and also a fellow Baltimorean hailing from the East Coast. Hello. I know that you're also a, an Orioles fan, in fact. You think you're gonna hit a home run here today in the arena? Uh, I believe so. Well, I'm trying, you know the O's hit a lot of home runs, but you know there's two players, since Machado and Davis. Yeah. I'm gonna try to harness the Machado, because he has the higher average and less strikeouts, so. No strikeouts. Yeah, if I don't, I hopefully, if I do, I hope I get a double, you know, help the team out if I don't get that home run. You're also one of the leaders of the clan. Can you tell us a little bit about the leadership of uh, your team and how you managed to win so many times? Teamwork, it really is. I mean, leadership, we all gel together well. Um, all the war generals, it's just all that hard time planning, getting on Discord, and then feeling comfortable with everybody. So it really is a team game, so I love it. Well, I know you got a lot of fans out there rooting for you to wrap it up here in the end. Good luck. Thank you. Next up from Fake WGM, we have Wiz. Yeah. Wiz, you're a 10v10 master and known as one of the greatest base builders in Clash of Clans. Tell us a little bit about what you have to do to prepare your 40 bases every war. Um, well, it's really just teamwork. Um, we have a lot of guys at home who really work hard every week uh, for those bases. And we have a lot of guys who test um, the entire week and yeah, so it's just teamwork, you have to work together, you have to communicate, and that's how we do it every week. Well, good luck to you today. We know Thank that you've got much. a lot uh, to be proud for. Fake WGM actually has the lowest stars against you of any clan in the Premier League, so congratulations for that. Thank you. Next up, we have Felix from Fake WGM. Felix is one of the generals of the Town Hall 10 game, and I know that you're also kind of at a flex position. Sometimes you hit up onto the Town Hall 11, sometimes you stay within your own bracket and go for the 10v10s. Tell me a little bit about the strategy deciding which base to attack. Yeah, that's very true. Like, I always uh, hold my hits, like most of the times, uh, to see if our 10v11 uh, game goes well. I hit Town Hall 10s because I enjoy that and I'm like decent at that. And if our 10v11 game is like stagnant, I'm hitting V11s because I'm like flexible with both strats, both type of strats. So yeah, that's basically my role in war. Cool under pressure and able to hit any target. Wishing you good luck today, Felix. Thank you, man. And finally, the mascot effect WGM. He was actually featured in game today. We have Yoop. Yoop is a Town Hall 9 player. He loves going for a heavy queen charge, and he is great at getting those three stars. Yoop, tell us a little bit about your path to the finals today. Well, honestly, um, we started off really strong, and these guys, like, they, they were planning their, their, their butts off, and they were working so hard, and uh, I'm sure that they're going to do their best and uh, seal this war off as strongly as they uh, started off. You started them off strong. Let's see how they finish up. Yeah, for sure. That's fake WGM, ladies and gentlemen. We've had an opportunity to meet both clans. We've met fake WGM, we've met One Hive, and we've got a lot of live attacks that are gonna happen today. Guys, we're gonna do our best to catch the ones that happen as we're uh, you know, entertaining you, and we're also going to be showing a lot that are scheduled here for in-studio. Speaking of those, we've got somebody from One Hive that's ready to attack right now, live from the podium. Who's it gonna be, guys? It's gonna be Chris. Chris! Yep. Come on! All right, so we've got Chris making his way to the podium, That's assuming the position, getting in that battle stance. The podium, obviously, a little bit different of an environment, Woody, than it is at home. I don't know too many people that have a podium sitting at their house. Do you? No, I don't. I'm usually cuddled up in bed or over on my couch, you know, very comfortable, planning my attacks and uh, hoping to get the two-star. But I know these guys are aiming even higher. Three stars expected from a lot of the 10v10 attacks. Absolutely. So we are going to hop in live right now. Chris is targeting 
Morning Legend from Fake WGM. We're going to be looking at a hog attack here. Apparently, he's got some uh, healers queued up as well, looking at probably some sort of a queen walk, queen charge. So we'll go ahead and get to that right this moment. The three minute mark has started. He's got three minutes to clear this base for three stars. We'll see if we can kick this thing off with a bang. A little bit of funnel as the Wizards take out some of the trash on the edge of the map here. Balloons go down early, though. It did look like he was trying to get that Inferno Tower with the early haste, five balloons, but some Teslas pop up there, do a little bit of extra damage, and the haste spell may be just a little bit shallow. And they obviously did not make it to the destination. Not quite all the way there, but he's still going to apply pressure in the bottom here. Barbarian King to help uh, out this wizard on the bottom, as well as a lot of tanking in the center there. The Golem, the heaviest ground troop in the game, starting to crack, though. He already crumbles, and two Golemites spit out. We've still got a few bowlers behind this Barbarian King, though. They're going to get some damage down there at the 6 o'clock position. Now, a lot of great work being done by the Queen up on the northeast side of his base. The Inferno Tower initially locked onto that Queen, but she was able to escape Death's grasp and get around the side of the base. But because that second Inferno Tower did not go down, she's going to be encountering that right now. Luckily, all other defense is down. She is going to remain in range, though, of the Inferno Tower, and that is going to Oof. probably spell her doom. Looks like it will. She locks the Elixir Collector, and unfortunately, she can't get healed up while that Inferno is locked onto her. The main stage of this attack, though, the Hog Riders up in the top corner are doing a lot of work. They explode a huge giant bomb, though. Let's see if the healers can lock onto these Hog Riders. Unfortunately, the Inferno Tower does not oh. go down, and that is going to bring this attack to an early end. Look at that, though, Woody. All of the defense, pretty much, except the Inferno Towers, uh, that could do any sort of damage to the troops, were dead. Unfortunate, yeah. but uh, that's the way it's going to end here for Chris on the first live attack. Great attempt here. Those island inferno towers just proving too much to be able to crack down, though. Absolutely. The, uh, the initial inferno tower approach with those balloons, it looked like he was trying to haste them in, get that cheap exchange on the initial entry. Just didn't quite work out. I'd love to talk to Chris, though, and ask him a little bit about what the plan was and what went wrong there. Chris, tell us, were you trying to get the inferno with those balloons? No, I wasn't. You were not. I had a feeling we might be wrong. No, I just tried to get the wizard tower and actually got the wizard tower so that the queen is breaking in the wall and taking the Inferno by herself. That was on the previous attack, and actually on my attack this didn't work, so the Queen wasn't there to clean up. So you tried to replicate something that had already happened, Correct. and it just and didn't go the same it. way. Yes. Go figure. Well, hey, good effort. Uh, do you have any more attacks left for this war? Yes, one more Awesome, to go. we'll see you back a little bit later. Thank good you. Good luck to you, Chris. Thank you. Well, with one attack out of the way from one hive, I think it's time to send it over to the other side of the stage. Do we have a player from Fake WGM ready to make an attack? Looks like we do. Wiz! Head on down, Wiz. Wiz making his way to the stage. All right, so we'll be waiting for Wiz to pop in live. We're looking at it just like a hawk would, but he's going to try to answer. Uh, one Hive not able to get the job done early in the stream, but uh, FW going to try to get it done here for three. It's so difficult, Power Bang, and I'm, I'm sure you know. Even in the regular season, the average 10 v 10 three-star rate was just around 24%. It speaks volumes that Wiz is even higher, approaching 30%. In fact, he's going to have a uh, uphill battle here, but might be able to do it. We're about to ready, uh, ready to hop into the match here now. Looks like he's attacking Flash from One Hive. Absolutely. We are uh, ready to rock and roll. Wiz starting to deploy his troops. This is going to be kind of an early deployment. He's got some minions on the outside trash buildings for some funneling. And then he's also got some bowlers doing some skip damage to try to be very efficient with his army housing space. This looks like a uh, traditional bowler and witch attack. Uh, yes. Uh, my Sunday school teacher told me to call it the Woller attack. Ah, yes, that's exactly what we call those. So yes. uh, we've got the uh, the golems heading in first, heading for that Inferno Tower right in the center of the base. And look at that, some quakes down in the middle to kind of soften everything up. We've got that CC approaching. It does look like the balloon and the queen are locked up in a poison spell, so really efficient use of the poison. And uh, we've got the queen going down the right side and bowler witch combo going down the left with the bulk of the army heading right down the center. Still has a jump spell lift in his army composition. Deals a ton of ground-based damage and raging them up in the 
center here. These bowlers are going absolutely mayhem in the center. Avalanche of bowlers rolling all over the field. And it looks like a great hit from Wiz tearing through the Inferno Tower. And with few defenses left, it looks like his attack has done its job. Wow, guys, look at this. He's down to the final few defenses. Still has a king ability getting through the wall. This is going to do it. Wiz is going to be celebrating the three star here for fake WGM. Solid attack, my man. Do you think you can get the final four buildings in the last one minute, 35 <laughs> seconds? I think he's feeling pretty confident, man. Nice work. Beautiful attack. Three stars for FW. Very well done there, Wiz. You know, it takes a lot of planning to be able oh to execute God. an attack at that level. Oftentimes, one of uh, the, the favorite attacks from the guys on stage here is Lava Loon, but you chose to go for a ground-based push there. What was it about that base design that uh, indicated to you that you could pick it apart that way? Um, well, first of all, um, like it was a fresh hit, so we didn't know CC, so um, we kind of like, had to assume what they would run. And um, we actually thought it would be a Lalo CC, um, so that's why I chose to send the Queen outside. It worked out anyways. Um, but yeah, basically the Inferno position gave it away that I could uh, um, hit the base this way, so I tripled, yeah. Very, Very well good. done. And those of you at home, if you don't know what a fresh hit means, he just executed that attack without yeah. any scouting on that base whatsoever. That typically has even half the same uh -huh. success rate as a scouted hit. base. An amazing job and flawless victory there. Absolutely, Wiz. a huge advantage to know what is in the base before you attack it, but Wiz not knowing anything this time. I'd love to go to a replay of that attack and kind of illustrate what Wiz was talking about there with the Inferno position. We had the, uh, the queen going down the side of the base. She is heading this direction. Only one healer on her. Really fantastic stuff. You've got bowlers and witches going down this direction, but check out the massive troops right in the middle of this base. Makes for a really, really, really strong push. The jump spell getting things down to the back side there, and uh, these guys are going to have no problem problems beating all the way to the Inferno Tower. And when you have that many bowlers going to the backside of the base, this thing is pretty much a foregone conclusion. Wiz is going to wrap up the easy three star. Beautiful attack from three ends. Put a fork in that cake because it is well done. Awesome. Well, we have some action that has happened during Wiz's live attack. I'd like to pull up the war score here, get you guys caught up on some stats and everything that's been going on. So we're going to take a look at the score. Fake WGM currently out in front, 89 stars to 84 for One Hive. The Town Hall 9s have been cleared for FW. One Hive still has one remaining. I'm not sure if they're going to hold that to the last second to play some mind games or not. Uh, but if we look at the 10 v 11 performance, FW has put another couple on the board. They are up to four Town Hall 10 v 11 successful attacks, while One Hive has cleared the board and has all five of them done. The Town Hall 10 versus 10 stats, we've got four for faked, uh, faked yeah, you guys know the name at home, right? F FW. And then uh, One Hive's got three. So that's pretty much the, uh, the score, and we are gonna rock and roll with some more attacks. Sounds good to me, Power Bank. Well, we do like to go back and forth. We've had one attack from each team. Let's send it back over to One Hive. Do you guys have a player that you are uh, willing to send to the block up send here? Send me, send yeah. me. Pero. All okay. right, Pero's oh. ready to rumble. Oh. Pero. Let's see what Pero's made of. He's heading to the podium. This is his first time appearing live in front of billions of people. And we are getting ready to take out uh, a Town Hall 10 base, I believe. Could be. I think yeah. that there's, uh, is, is there one? No, actually, one hive is taking out all the 11th, 7th day. They must be going for a 10 v 10 here. And I know that Pero has got a great chance of being able to pull this off. He's actually even got a 67% win rate against those 11. So dipping down against the 10s now. He is the war general uh, for the one hive team on uh, the, the, the 10 attacks. His, uh, his favorite army comp I also heard is queen walk uh, into bowlers. That's a very strong strategy, one of my favorites myself. And Pero is live now. He's hitting a base that did get scouted about 20 minutes ago. He's going to try to do better uh, than the earlier results. So we've got a baby dragon at uh, 6 o'clock down there doing a little bit of funneling. Queen is going to start walking to her right. And as you can see, a couple of giants tanking for some bowlers on the southwest part of the base. So a big spread to match this big spread base on defense. All kinds of troops working at all different angles. And here we've got some quake action in the center of this base to soften up an expo and an inferno tower. 
Looks like Para has brought the whole kitchen sink here. Plenty of different troops, each with their own specialized uh, positions in this attack here. Archers picking away buildings around the edge. Looks like the main uh, thrust of this attack, though, is going to be comprised of bowlers. Another baby dragon does go down at that 3 o'clock position to start funneling away. Just trying to get that queen, the target, onto the exact right position. But here we go. The main attack is now underway. Golem soaking for uh, some bowlers moving in the backside. Barbarian King to support that push as well. Yeah, I like how he's dropped the baby dragon up there at around 2 o'clock. He's going to do some funneling here and hopefully get that queen and bowlers to focus on the core rather than rock around the base. But great jump spell there. Gets the king and the bowlers into the base, but the CC is uh, doing some damage there. Oh. Balloon doing work right now. It is not being uh, targeted. Unfortunate there that the attack is kind of dying out in the core. The queen walking around the outside. This is not going to end up being three stars, but hopefully some valuable information was gained from this attack. Queen's going to end up trying to get some more percentage. Uh, just in case this base ends up not being three-starred later on. Para went on a massive rampage with that Barbarian King in the center, knocking out both of his opponent's uh, heroes, but looks like it didn't wind up being enough in the end. A, a valiant effort here from this bowler attack, but ultimately, One Hive is looking for the three-star here. Uh, getting two, just like you said, uh, provides some valuable scouting if they weren't exactly sure where those bombs or Teslas were located, uh, or even if they were unaware of what might have been in the CC. Uh, but with uh, just a, a little bit of steam left in this train, Pero uh, will, looks like he's locking onto the, the wall here. Go <laughs> figure, that queen's going to hit the wall. I mean, that dark elixir uh, collector, that's, uh, that's way out of range. No, no, no way. Why would you go for that when you could just uh, shoot up a poor lava wall? Absolutely. So uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll watch this for, for a little while since Pero's standing up on stage having to watch uh, with us. There's nothing else he can do, ladies and gentlemen. He's used his queen ability. He's used his spells but still chugging along like the little engine that could. <laughs> hey, you got 70%. That's passing in most of the books. Go Paro! All right. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> hey, nice try, man. They don't always go your way. Uh, Paro from One High falling a little bit short on that attack. I noticed the, uh, the bowlers, you sent 15 of them to the core, and they melted. They kind of fell uh, apart. I don't know quite what happened to them. Do you, do you, what could you have done better there to make that thing go a little smoother? Um, I could have started the golem and the bowlers a little bit later, uh, be, uh, after one of the wizard towers was down, and also my second jump was not, not, not good. <laughs> so yeah. it didn't work out. But, but we still, but we still hope that uh, another attacker I execute it properly is going to get this base. Very good. So planning on using a similar plan, just trying to execute. We're gonna it better. see. We're gonna see. All right. Well, hey, the war general is gonna do his general generaling, but uh, we've got another live attack incoming. We're going fast and furious, baby. Why don't you kick us off, Woody? Gladly, Power Bang. Welcome back, Faked WGM. They're gonna be sending their next attacker to the stage. Who's it gonna be, folks? It's gonna be me. All right. Felix, 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 Felix. Felix the Cat prowling down the stage now. Gonna make his way to the podium. And we're beginning the next stage of this attack, the Town Hall 10 General. We'll be starting up soon. Felix sounded awfully confident in his interview, uh, saying how he was gonna come up there and really flex his muscles. I don't know if he used those exact terms, but uh, I got the vibe <laughs> that he was coming to play. Wipes the sweat off his hands. He's ready for rumble. No misclicks allowed in this game. Power uh, even if you don't misclick, it still isn't very forgiving, Woody. All right, we've got the uh, bowlers getting started in the top left. He's doing some skip damage there. Look at that. He's actually skipping it onto two different what? structures. That is expert play right there from Felix, starting things off with really efficient use of his camp space. That's going to create a nice little funnel for that queen coming from the top. A couple giants in there to tank early. And this is looking really, really solid so far from Felix. Will the wall breakers avoid the mortar? Yes, no, they don't. Wall breaker failed to start things off. No more wall breakers left in the camp. The queen is not going to make it into the compartment, and that is going to make it so she's very uh, not able to get that inferno. She's going to walk around, and this attack <laughs> off to a rough start, uh, but we are going to do our best to try to recover here. It looks so pretty. I always love it when the bowler is able to get two buildings with one stone, but uh, with the, the fail on that inferno charge, he's definitely going to be having an uphill battle here. Player from Fake WGM moving in at the 10 o'clock position. Going to take out this town hall first. Now, you may be wondering why it's outside. Don't worry, One Hive knows what they're doing. They're trying to prevent the three star here. They're willing to take uh, a hit on the chin if they're able to keep any building in this base up. 
Absolutely. The Town Hall specifically, one of the highest hit point buildings in the game, is a great uh, obstacle Ooh. and a, a guard for the defenses that actually do matter. So these guys uh, securing that Town Hall, it really isn't going to matter too much in the end as all of these bases will have at least two stars on them regardless, and the three star will be likely on most all of them. So we'll have to wait and see exactly how many of these guys three star. But as we kind of watch this attack wrap up here, Felix going around the bottom of the base, one healer keeping up some bowlers and witches, and the witches have locked on to the CC at this point, so it's a matter of trying to get some extra percentage and hopefully reveal some information that maybe an earlier attacker did not. Another attempt to take out that Infernal on top failed. I don't know if you noticed this, Power Bang. There was a big clump of balloons all hasted up, trying to make their way there, but got knocked back and taken down by skeletons. Even if he had been able to take that out, though, it still would have been a very difficult uh, run. These witches distracted for so long by this Lava Hound up top. You can see uh, why it is often put in those clan castles. Makes it really easy to prevent the attacker from being able to actually destroy any buildings. Yeah, I can't imagine this is awkward at all for the attackers, knowing the <laughs> result of the attack, just chilling up on stage. <laughs> Felix in the spotlight right now. I'm not sure uh, what's exactly going on here, but the uh, the witches are finishing everything up. Giant out in front. Healer, let him die for goodness sakes. Gee, many Christmas. Let's get that thing uh, taken care of. Oh, man, I know FW is going to be He's bringing in dead. some uh, reinforcements here. Oh, Lava Hound pops, and the pups are going to get a little bit of help uh, to, to the rest of the base. Taking right, out try, some final man. troops there. So the attack finally wraps up. Holy cow, let's uh, let's kick it to some some perhaps some replays of some earlier action in the war. Uh, we are going to be checking out uh, an attack by Lord Byron that went down a little bit earlier as he did get the Town Hall uh, 9 versus 9 six pack. So we're going to go ahead and check out one of those attacks and uh, give Lord Byron his uh, time in the sun, so to speak. So. LB going to be taking on Jonas here from Faked WGM. And he's hitting this symmetrical looking base. He's got the 16 wizards in this one. Kind of an unconventional army composition. Lord Byron uh, attacked a little bit earlier today. For those of you that are obviously familiar with the, the war scene, you know that it's uh, very common for the Town Hall 9s to be done very early on in war. So we do have a couple of Town Hall 9s in the studio. These guys have been done. Their feet are actually up on the desk right now, uh, and they're just relaxing watching their teammates sweat in the pressure cooker. This is a very important start to the war, though. These Town Hall 9 attacks are crucial. The better you're able to do with them, the more scouting opportunities you get from the remainder of your 9 attacks. Pretty much every Town Hall 9 gets 3 starred in almost every war. The Town Hall 10s are where uh, the, the decision factor comes into play here, but every little bit helps Lord Byron starting off uh, this war strong for one high last night in this first attack. Absolutely. So this is actually looking pretty strong and kind of an unconventional approach here. Again, as we mentioned before, the queen on the far side of the base from the main army composition, she is actually going to walk around being responsible for all of those outer flanking defenses while the main group double jumps through the core. Bowlers and witches doing, or not witches, wizards, doing the damage here in the main guts of the base. The king's still alive as well, and they are just absolutely ripping it apart in there. Those golems are doing an amazing job keeping the wizards, the bowlers, everything that does the actual damage in this comp nice and safe, still very healthy in the back. The Barbarian King just about to go down here, but he did an awesome job uh, also keeping those troops out back nice and safe. And as you noted earlier, Power Bang, the Queen with virtually no trouble at all, walking beautifully down the left side of this base from 12 o'clock all the way down to 9. She's taken out a nice chunk uh, of this defense as well. Jonas having trouble keeping this massive uh, force off his base. Well, it's wrapping up nicely. The Queen finishing off, using that ability at the very end. I do believe uh, Lord Byron had his friend Atoma reach over and smack that ability right at the last second <laughs> as they were sitting right next to each other. But really good stuff there. LB getting the three star. Let's hear it for LB. Very well done, Lord Byron. Now, your namesake, the Romantic era English poet, once said that she walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies. He, he was talking about your queen walk, right? You're feeling me, exactly. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Thank you. I'm glad someone gets me. <laughs>
Awesome. That was uh, that was a really good sidebar there. I, I enjoyed that immensely. Uh, we, we had LB <laughs> with the, the re- no. It was awesome. I that's above my pay grade. Flew right <laughs> over my head. Uh, we we had LB though with the attack. We had the execution with the queen on the far side of the base. You had golems coming in with the wizards uh, on the other side. Is that something that you're used to doing? Is that kind of like an attack strategy that you're you're familiar with, or something you tried yeah. just based on the base? It is. So this is an attack that I've been working on for the last four or five months, and I actually have to give a shout out to Jonas because it was his video that actually inspired me to start doing this attack to begin with. So awesome. uh, a bit of fun there. So. <laughs> awesome. Well, let's hear it again for LB. All right, Very so well done. go yeah. ahead and uh, we're going to take a look at another replay, I think, here. We got uh, one from FW coming up here next. I'm going to go ahead and find it real quick. We'll cue, cue it up. Sounds beautiful to me. We might want to watch another uh, Town Hall 9 power bang. What do you think? Uh, maybe Silent Night? Yeah. That'd be a good one to watch. I think he was in the number 39 position there for their team. Overall, the war going uh, very well. Just a we got brief, a brief step back. It's an 89-84 game right now for faked WGM. We got, a, we got chow time on the screen. I'm just okay. going in the order that uh, I got on my list here. Sure. We got chow time from One Hive. He's going to be taking on Skip from Faked. And uh, he's bringing the hog attacks here. We've got all kinds of troops in this army composition. 16 hogs, that three goblin? golems. I think that's a goblin down there wailing away on the town hall. Absolutely. <laughs> Go ahead for some loot. That's, that's really smart, harder. actually, because they Funny, do double the DPS too. of uh, on, on resource building. So that's, that's really... Uh, Sharp thinking instead of using like a barbarian or an archer or something, just use those gobs and do some massive damage to that town hall that's now a resource building. Just a little bit quicker. Nice poison spell on these CC troops here. We got a baby dragon in the center that's going to get taken out by that. Lots uh, of heavy hitters moving into the left pocket here. Archer Queen going to lock onto the baby dragon, try to take uh, it out, but uh, this attack here is still looking quite well. Two golems in the bottom, uh, moving toward the left of the base with plenty of DPS behind him. Those wizards can really tear through a tower. Looks like the main stage of this attack is going to be hog riders, though. Here they come. There goes the hogs. Jump spell for the hogs. What? What? I thought they could jump the walls anyways. Oh, they're going. The, the golems and the king are, are uh. actually going to jump over. They're going to be taking on that queen on the far side of the base there, but that did look kind of funny. So <laughs> those hog riders going in, helping them with the push. I like how he split those hogs. He's got Ooh. the other groups heading in, one from the bottom left, one from the top left. They're going to reinforce the queen, make sure she survives. And look at the queen wailing away, and she's actually going to oh. pop a couple of those skellies over the wall, helping out her hoggy friends. Uh, the hog riders push through to the top side of this base. And we still have some tanking going on for the king down south, so really solid effort here uh, from Chow Time. Hog Riders, one of the favorite attack strategies of these Town Hall 9 players. Queen uh, having not too much trouble up top. Looks like she soaked one of the giant bombs intended for the hogs moving on in, but they will be able to finish off this wizard tower and uh, have easy time with the point defenses after that, Power Bang. Beautiful, looking good. Queen's gonna finish this thing up. It's all said and done. Chow Time getting it done for one hive a little bit earlier on, swagging that wall breaker. Mm. Send him away. Not needed. Your services. Always that, that CC has been a pain in the butt all war long. They're a couple 99% a little bit on that as well. So really interesting stuff. We've got uh, we've got a live attack as well that's going right now. We're going to hop into that one. We've got DM, a.k.a. The Hands, going in from fake WGM. The entry from the bottom of the base going in, trying to get as much value as possible. Hog Riders, though, is what he's following up with. The Queen's going to have to try to get this Inferno Tower on the left side, but in the fire of the Inferno, it doesn't look like she's going to get there. Two Inferno Towers left up now for the Hog Riders, and that's going to be a lot to overcome. It spells their doom, unfortunately. The Archer Queen having a lot of difficulty being able to get Check through the Golem king. first. But wow, yeah, the King out the right side. Might be able to make it to the Inferno Tower. He's having to get through some skeletons, though. Plenty of distractions on the defensive side here. One Hive uh, playing very well with this setup. The uh, DM, aka the hands, moving in still, but these hogs are having some difficulty. You think they've got it, Power Bang? I think they're thinning out too much. If they had stayed together and kind of clumped up on one defense at a time, I think the momentum may have carried them through since they had a couple of healers there actually supporting them. But because they fanned out and went like two hogs per defense, yeah, that'll work on the edges, but not in the core of the base. So unfortunately, DM going to fall a little bit short here. Uh, he's wrapping up an 85% attack. Really nice effort there, uh, but... Unfortunately, for FW, they're going to have to try again. 
10 v 10 attempt from fake WGM. They've been able to uh, go ahead on the stars race here. They're still at 89. It's a tie on the number of attacks used, 64 each. So they each have 16 attacks left. Most of the Town Hall 11s are waiting until the very end of this war to get those attacks in. You want to make sure that you let your 10s get as many stars as possible. Going for those three stars is certainly difficult, but you can free up your Town Hall 11s to go for even harder targets. Definitely a preferable position. Isn't that right, Powerbank? Absolutely. And we've got some more stats that were just on the screen. Still nothing is, uh, has happened in the time we've been showing these, 89, 84, nobody kind of creeping ahead just yet. So while we've got a minute, let's go ahead, hop into another replay, showing one of the fake WGM attacks from a little bit earlier on. Here we've got Silent Knight taking on LB. We showed LB taking on uh, the faked guys, and he was getting the job done. And it's time for a little revenge here. Silent Knight using the uh, the Queen Walk up from the top left of the base. We've got a Laloon attack with 16 balloons in store for this base, so he's going to be targeting through the air as he notices his all four air defenses are in the center of the base, kind of in a line, and he feels like he can probably exploit that a little bit. Archer Queen starts off with a triumphant march, singing, "We are the champions, my friends." Terran through a few of the buildings over on the left side, going to meet her match in the other queen, but with a rage spell down, though, those healers are doing quite well to help her out. She is on a royal march toward the center of this base, but look out, Skelet Trap triggers, and she's going to have a little bit of distraction before this dragon locks on. Man, a lot of incoming pressure onto the queen, but luckily that rage spell is going to keep her tip top on health. The king is actually working his way around the top of the base. That's going to keep the queen focused on the air defenses. Notice the wall breakers in the camp, five of them. I'm guessing he's about to break in here after the king rounds the corner. There they are coming around, going to open up that junction. That's going to give the queen a path deep into the base to wreck all kinds of stuff, namely two air defenses. Destruction junction, what's your function? Not going to be able to hold off this attack just yet. Queen is going to be able to pop down both of these air defenses, and it's time for the main stage of the attack. We're going to be coming in soon here. We've got a Lava Hound to block for 16. Count them, 16 balloons starting to move their way in over on the top left at that 9 o'clock position. Going to get a little bit damaged by that bomb there, uh, taking out a, a few of their hit points, but they're still going to be moving in toward their target. Thankfully, that Wizard Tower is not going to lock onto them, and I think that uh, Silent Knight's got a pretty good setup here. Yeah, it's looking, it's looking really good so far. What a, what a dominant attack, honestly. That, that uh, Queen Charge with the King going around, it made it really, really easy on these balloons. They've got one air defense left to take out. The last Lava Hound has just exploded, and there's nothing left in this base to really worry about with the exception of Wizard Towers. He does have one balloon uh, to send on the backside for some distraction if needed. The Queen is still alive as well. There is that distraction balloon and a Rage Spell to help those balloons get through the Wizard Towers. Things looking up for Silent Night. Obviously, we know this attack ends in three stars. Otherwise, we probably <laughs> wouldn't show it, right? Indeed. Well, with that, the balloons are going to be able to take out that Wizard Tower. Fortunately for Silent Night, it locked onto the Archer Queen a little bit uh, before those balloons. Otherwise, it might have been a little bit of difficulty there. But with plenty of cleanup troops here, the pups and minions are going to be able to make their way toward the top right side of the space, wiping out the remainder of the defense, taking it down. Three stars is good from Silent Night. Absolutely. So really good stuff there. All right, so good stuff from both clans so far. We don't see any lives, so I am actually going to hop into an earlier replay again. We're going to move over to the One Hive side. We saw some 10v10 action from Matty J a little bit earlier in studio. Was not quite live on camera, but I did happen to see him do it live, so that was pretty cool. Matty J bringing those early balloons in, taking out the building on the top left, getting a nice little uh, funnel started up there. 22 hog riders in store for this base, and Matty J is going to get started on the right side with the queen. Lots of hog riders in store, and it seems that the price is right. Heavy handed hit at the top left as the golem soaking a bunch of cannon shots is going to support these bowlers moving on the back. Barbarian King to provide the next layer of attack uh, for Maddie J from One Hive. Archer Queen's making her way through this town hall, but remember, he is going for the three star in this 10v10 hit. Looking real sharp so far. The queen has survived. She's continuing to walk down the side of the base, and I love how he's deployed his hogs so that they overtake the queen and actually protect her, keeping her alive for the cleanup process. Now, the hog riders working their way around the inside of this base. Things Ooh, looking up yeah. for Matty J. This is uh, going very, very well. We're going to actually speed this up a little bit. Watch as the, uh, the troops come around. 
They are destroying things, looking pretty solid. Dominant raid here. We do have a live attack going right now, though. I would like to switch to that, if at all possible. We'll come back to Matty, Day, Matty J in just a moment to talk with him. Uh, but let's go ahead and see what's going on live right now. We've got Chubbs from One Hive taking on Thomas for a 10v10 attempt. So we've caught the beginning. We've got the Queen coming in from the top left behind a Golem and a Baby Dragon working on the funnel. Queen up on the top, making her way toward that Town Hall. She's just trying to chip away a lot of these outside buildings that can provide uh, an unnecessary distraction for your main attack force. Looks like Chubbs is moving in primarily with 20 Hog Riders, an entire score of them. He still hasn't played his Barbarian King yet. He could provide a, a great benefit as well on the attack. About to pop his Queen ability. There it goes, taking down uh, the Storges there and pulling out those CC troops. Looks like it is a Lava Hound and Balloon uh, with a Jumps. Uh, Fell right on top, yeah, to allow the Valkyries to make their way in. Look at the Valks. He's trying to get to the Inferno Tower. Unfortunately, they have a mind of their own. We got one down here. We've got a few that have gotten <laughs> to the core. They get some skellies taken out, but now the Queen's going to distract them, oh. and they get kaboom! They're destroyed, so uh, that's not ideal, but we do get the King locked onto that Inferno, and that ability is going to get the King. Will we get the Queen as well? Getting awfully close. I think he's, he's made it through the wall. wall. One wall. shot. Oh, he gets her. Oh. Holy cow, what an amazing entry here from Chubbs. This is going about as ideally as it could so far. The balloon is down, so it's not going to be a problem. Bowler's working on the cleanup. We got hogs in. A free spell is going to be coming down here in just a moment on this right side. There we go. Inferno is uh, frozen. And here comes the heal spell to get these hogs right back on up to full life. They're taking a while to get into the heal spell. Uh -oh. Unfortunately, they don't make it there oh. before the Inferno's back. They hit a giant bomb. Two of them. Oh, man, two of them. And that Giant is that. Bomb wipes those four hog riders out, and this attack has been left flat footed. Lava Hound gonna start trying to clean up the rest of these attacking troops as Chubb sends in his cleanup crew, but with plenty of defenses still up, looks like he will not be able to secure the three star in this attack. Power bang. That was really good stuff there from Chubbs on the entry. Unfortunately, the, the heal spell misplaced a little bit, a little bit early, and the freeze a little bit early there, so timing is everything. What I'd like to do is go to my new Telestrator tool that they gave me. I feel like John Madden from the NFL. I'm going to draw on the <laughs> screen for a minute. But we skipped out on Matty J's little interview process. I paused it, though. Don't worry. All right. We've got an attack coming in. Notice the hog riders. They're going to be coming all the way through. Check out those air. Oh, my goodness. That's ridiculous. So what he's done, though, is he's got in, taken out a whole whole bunch of the upper side of this base to where only one Inferno Tower is left over, and that's what he's got to worry about taking out. So let's go ahead, watch the Hog Riders as they cruise through the rest of this. Looking really solid, that free spell. That is perfect freeze timing, ladies and gentlemen. There's the heal to get those all healed up as they make their way outside of that Inferno. Things looking pretty good from that point. Matty J, you got the three star, my friend. Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. So let's talk about that. Let's hear it from Matty J first and foremost. That was the earlier Town Hall 10 versus 10 attack that you got that, uh, that three star on. Hog Riders, the, the method of destruction. Normally you're a dragon guy, is that right? Uh, that's, that's what they call me, yeah. What do what the, dragon, what, what the dragons do to you to make you want to bring hogs this time around? Um, well, FW built some pretty good bases uh, for my dragon attacks. So um, ideally, I like to go air, but uh, the pathing on that was really good for the hogs. And um, as you can see, even though my freeze timing wasn't very impeccable, it was still it, it still worked out. So. <laughs> he said Pekka. <laughs> anyways, anyways, all right, so good job on the attack. That was amazing. The pathing, as you mentioned, is ideal for the hog riders. Beautifully done. Thank Three star for one hive. Let's uh, let's kick it over to to Fake WGM. Sounds for, like a good idea. Action. We're gonna have uh, another live attack from them, perhaps. Looks All like right. he's ready to go. Wow. <laughs> Philip, the Town Hall 11 player, is going to be springing the heat. We've got about an hour left in this war power bang, but uh, sending in one of their heaviest hitters. We're definitely expecting great things from him. Absolutely. Philip, one of the nicest guys here. Been talking with him this week. Really good guy. Wish him nothing but the best on this attack. He settles in, getting that wide stance with a low center of gravity. Very important for Clash of Clans to make sure that you're memorizing, uh, you know, that posture for okay. when you attack. I, th I thought you saw, uh, you did a video on that, didn't you? Absolutely. This is coming from a true professional here. <laughs> 
All right, so it looks like from the bottom we've got some witches. We've got a golem out in front, gonna distract a little bit from these mortars. Beautiful sapphire rocky creature moving in there. One hog rider to help him out. I love the precision that uh, Philip is bringing to this attack. He's got another golem moving on into the top. It is definitely a shattered entry here with more bowlers and witches behind him. The, uh, the Wolder attack has made its return to the uh, arena here, and with uh, massive ground-based force, it looks like he's doing pretty well, breaking right into uh, that uh, 4 o'clock spot there with a the jump spell. Wow, look at this. This is, this is looking really strong. That is a massive group of troops in the center, and look at that jump spell placement right on that center compartment. Going to open oh. up everything, including both Inferno Towers, looking good on both sides as well so far. The left side petering out just a little bit, hoping that the center group is going to... Uh, Survive long enough to help take out the left, but the right side looking solid, still has the queen abilities, marching his way through, hopefully to victory. Popped that king ability right as soon as the rage spell went down. He flattened this base power bang. Philip has sent in a massive wave across the entire length of this base, and it looks like there's hardly any defenses left to stop this big push coming in up at the top. Bowlers and witches crushing the defenses as the Archer Tower does its best, but cannot keep up with this massive force. That's the problem with these point defenses. They cannot deal with so many skeletons swarming them at once. Needed more splash damage, and there was just no way to get the targeting on there properly. Well done to Philip. Amazing stuff here from Philip. We are actually going to uh, pop over before we talk to him. We'll come back to that in just a moment. We do have a live attack right now. Oh, Indicut with the Town Hall 11 dip coming over from the One Hive side. So we're going to hop over to that. And One Hive is going to try to just punch him right in the mouth just after they got hit. So here we go. Indicut coming in. We've got Drag Loon action going on. The King going around the outside of the map. Dragon's backing him up. We've got some clone Whoa. balloons. Look at that, Woody. Hardly ever see that clone spell, but when you do, it's often on the big balloon push. I've seen that before, and it's working very well once again this time. Trying to get toward that Inferno, and it does go down. Balloons wallop the defenses. This 11 uh, is being able to take out this, this very easily. Finishes off the remainder uh, of all uh, of his buildings in the core, and is well now wake, uh, working his way on the left side of the base. That's right. So, Indica, getting it done for one hive. Let's hear it for one hive, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing like having a live audience for Clash of Clans. Do you uh, have that at home, Woody? Because I sure do. Uh, yeah, my little brother was cheering for me one time. Oh, it's awesome. My whole family sounds off every time I get a one star. So <laughs> uh, looking pretty solid here on the attack. Indicates wrapping things up for the three star. We're going to go ahead and bring it live back in studio right now. We just had Philip attack for F, uh, FW. I'd love to hear from Philip and, and tell us what was it like being out on that stage? A lot of eyeballs on you, a lot of internet eyeballs on you as well. Uh, tell us what you, what you felt like. <laughs> it kind of felt like home, actually. <laughs> I've, I've got a lot going on at home with, uh, with my kids and my dogs and my wife, so <laughs> it's, it's pretty crazy at home. So this isn't all that much different. Jeez Louise. Uh, to Philip's wife, I'm sorry. He's describing a pretty chaotic home life here. <laughs> yeah. um, we're going to go ahead and kick it over to One Hive. Nice job to Philip once again. <laughs> One Hive, who do we have in studio that's brave enough to step to the podium right now to attempt to get that three star? Wait, you, I'll, I'll go next. This all right, Toma. there's some uncertainty there, but it looks like Atoma's going to man up and take the stage. All right. Swooping on in, he's ready to drop that Atoma bomb on fake WGM. All right, so Atoma taking the stage, and a little, uh, little tidbit for the viewers at home. Uh, Atoma's bags did not make it uh, to nice. Talon on time. The airlines did something with him. They're still touring Europe, having a great time without him. Uh, and he had the tightest pants on I've ever seen in my life <laughs> all week long. But it didn't stop him. He all was boogie and he was having brain. a great time. Way, What's that? The blood all rushed to his brain. It helped him out. Absolutely. So he's going to be trying uh, to save some of that blood rush and uh, get that three star here. So Atoma gearing up, getting ready for the attack. One second, just finalizing trip real quick. No worries. Oh. Finalize away, my friend. I've done that plenty of times, Power Bang. I'm just about ready to start my attack and I'm like, wait, no. What was I thinking? Was delete, 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 delete. Gym new troops. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> gem new troops. Don't even start with me on that. I am a I'm guilty. Compulsive. Guilty. But I mean, when you, you got to get your attack in, you got to get it in. One of the things that these guys said time and time again to me when they were prepping for the war today was that they don't want to let their clan down. That is their primary driving motivation today. They're all about the team spirit, the esprit de corps, if you will. And uh, with Atoma's next attack just about to start underway, I know that he's going to cook up the perfect composition for this Absolutely. Uh, great team atmospheres from both clans. Definitely something to strive for for those at home. I've uh, been really a, in admiration of the, the camaraderie, the teamwork, and the constant communication that both uh, clans have shown throughout our time here in Estonia. And but the time, the, the time has come. We're here. Yeah. We're, we're attacking. Okay. We kind of told me he's in live. Let's check it out. Finally uh, finalized the army here, and I'm wondering what troops it was that he was uncertain about. Hmm. I think it was yeah. that single archer. Ah, oh, okay. Switch to archer from what? Did he have a, a goblin in there somewhere? Oh, for sure. Absolutely. So there it is. Wizard starts things off on the right. It's like he's getting ready to make a nice little funnel there to enter that uh, little wedge carved out by the Inferno Tower. Now, this is a tough base to crack. I think that we've seen one attack on this one before, Power Bang. Absolutely. Legend uh, was the base that we started out on in the stream. It looks like he's going to be trying to modify the earlier attempt. Queen Walk coming from Atoma up on the top right-hand side of this base. He's going to try okay. to take out that Wizard Tower before walking down the wall and ultimately ending up taking out the bottom Inferno Tower. It's uh, very difficult to get into that compartment, especially with so much room between the Inferno Tower and that wall. Barbarian King making his way down toward the bottom where there's a jump spell, nice and handy there for this next wave of the attack. Rage Bell goes down and it's a big group of troops that are walloping an expo now. Gollum takes down uh, the mortar, Valkyrie helping out, but it's going left. I think that he intended that to go toward the Inferno Tower. CC troops pulled out and are just dropping bombs all over that poor Barbarian King. That King is uh, right on track what he's taking out the Queen as intended. The Queen on the right side is going to be going for that Inferno Tower. Oh, okay. This guy right here, the Queen is going to be wrapping around taking that out. The Hog Raiders only have to worry about the top one right now. This is actually looking really, really good so far. One Hog Rider in the core trying to go hero mode on the Air Sweeper is not going to end up getting the job done. That's okay. <laughs> but the Queen still has her ability. So we're going to have to watch her move Moving forward here, Poisons fell down in advance to take out the air, uh, the skeletons. Really solid play there, but bombs on both mm. sides here are going to thin out the hogs. Unfortunately, Inferno Tower is going to finish the job for a legend on defense. Bummer, man. That Archer Queen always had a lot of difficulty reaching the Inferno Tower. you got to have some way to wipe it out. It's the strongest defense, but with that, Atoma will be marching back. The Legends base has held up again. i got to tell you, Fake WGM is all about that base. It has been holding strong against One Hive time and time again. So, uh, Atoma, it, it didn't quite go your way, and I've got bad news for you, my friend. Your, your teammates may have already told you. What's up? Uh, on the way back uh, to your seat there, there was another attack that just wrapped up on your base, my friend. Uh -oh. Did I get tripled? You got tripled. Oh, oh. No. We're going to bring that one up live right now for the stream. But unfortunately, his base met a gruesome end. Atoma619, while in the process of uh, attacking, was attacked himself. We're going to go ahead and look over the iPad here. I'm going to try to find out who it was uh, that hit him. And I feel we'll a bring that right blow. on up coming through the studio, Power Bank. Wiping out an attack on his own base and then failing on that 3v3. Let's see what happened here as Juski made it in against Atoma. Juski from Faked W is gonna be uh, bringing the Lalo attack. Look at this, uh, Suicide Hero Lalo it looks like, which is basically means that the heroes by themselves are going to take out some objectives. And it looks like he's got some wall breakers, likely gonna be breaking in the corner of the wall here so the queen can access this air defense, as well as the enemy Archer Queen. We'll see if that's able to actually happen here. There are the wall breakers we spoke of, compartment open, and now the queen's going to be approaching the air defense. That is highly, highly valuable. When you've got 31 balloons in the army composition, you know what he is, I always say, more loons! And uh, it appears Juski has listened, and he's going to be uh, wrapping things up here on Atoma here just in a moment. You always say that. We were at a restaurant uh, eating dinner the other day, and you just kept shouting more loons. I didn't know what you were talking about, but now I'm glad we have a little bit of context there. I, I saw something on the menu in Estonian, and it was called more loons. It was oh. delicious. Oh, nice. Well, delicious at the restaurant, and it looks like uh, it was a delicious hit in the bottom as well, taking out uh, a big chunk of the defense there. The suicide uh, attack from those heroes getting the job done as we move into the top right side of the base now. Lava Hound soaking a lot of damage for these balloons. They're about to get hasted up and we'll be moving in to start taking out these defenses. 
Yeah, things looking really solid so far. This was a great entry from, uh, from Juski. Yeah. And obviously, we know how this ends up. I did kind of inform Atoma of that as he was walking <laughs> back to his seat. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but hey, it happens. FW racking up another Town Hall 10 three-star to add to their total. I believe that brings them up to five now for the war. Really setting the tone here and putting a lot of pressure over on the one hive side who does have one dip fail. That means Town Hall 11 versus Town Hall 10 so far in this war. So look at this, a whole bunch of balloons still left over, trailing balloons as well. Man, you knew right away that this thing is uh, a done deal. We've got minions on the right side to clean up, so that is going to do it for the attack. Let's hear it for FW and their Town Hall 10, Juski. Even if you know now that, that attack is going to be wrapping up, it's always fun to see how exactly he got the job done. Lava Loon, difficult to be able to pull off that three uh, star, especially when it's in a 10v10 situation there, but nicely done to Juski. Pulling ahead, in fact, as you said, in the 10v10 race now, that means that fake WGM does have the upper hand, and we've got just about one hour left in this war. Not many attacks uh, remain. Absolutely. So I want to call attention to our Telestrator once again, kind of show you guys some stuff at home about what we were talking about. This is one one of the most effective Town Hall 10 strategies. And what you're going to see is a air defense that is isolated inside the walls. That means the queen cannot reach it from the outside. You see that as well as the archer queen. Both of these guys being primary objectives for an attack. So once the wall breakers break open the wall down here at this point, the queen is going to be able to get in, take out the uh, air defense, as well as get the enemy archer queen. So let's go ahead and watch as this happens. This was perfect execution. There you see the wall breakers come in, open the wall for the queen, and now that that has happened, she is able to get to the air defense while the king clears out the buildings on the outside of the base so that the queen does not walk. So as you'll see, the uh, queen is going to pop her ability here in just a moment, take out the enemy queen. That is that, and that is what makes for a successful attack as you've got 31 balloons to take out the remainder of the base. So great job to Juski on that one. Tricky to be able to get that job done, but he gave that queen no other choice. Excellent flaws funneling with the Barbarian King. Queen went straight into the base and did her job. She didn't have to worry about too much uh, damage coming off against her either. That mortar popping a, a few shots at her, but mortar. with just the splash damage. Yeah, what he likes mortar. He's the mortar mauler. It's true. It's true. Uh, very true. All right, guys. So we do have another attack up in store for you. We've got somebody that was live in studio just a little bit earlier. He has already taken out a base. That is you from uh, FW, uh, the, the face of FW at this point now with his face in game, that handsome <laughs> devil. Let's go ahead and take it to his replay. We're going to watch him uh, work his magic against Cobra Killer from One Hive. Here we go. Let's, uh, there's that shield. That's the one we like to see. So here we go. We got the replay. We've got you uh, bringing in 30 hog riders and four heals here. He's just looking to embarrass this base on the ground. I heard that he usually likes to play the baby dragon uh, type of attack. So going in with the hog riders instead, certainly uh, it says to me that he's, he's feeling much more grounded, Power Bang. He, he's not high in the clouds anymore. He's going to be going for a standard uh, attack. We've seen plenty of hog rider hits so far today, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing another one that takes this base out. Absolutely. It looks like Yoop is uh, going to be taking out the clan castle troops there with the double poison. Also gets the queen taken out. So really high value so far from his heroes. And look at this. She even changes directions. Huh. When, is the, when is the queen ever smart? Well, apparently now is the time. She's going to be going down the right side of the base now as the hog riders follow in the king. King doing a little bit of tanking. Ooh. We're going to do a software update. Okay. Actually, uh, we, we're going we're gonna to maybe do this later. Um, yeah. Thank you, iOS. We're going to remind us later. Maybe, maybe like, I don't know, 5 a.m. would be a good time for yeah. this update. What do, you, what do you think, Woody? When should we schedule that back? That sounds like a good idea to me. But back into the base, hog riders screaming through the arena, echoing throughout the hillsides as they tear apart the defenses. Air defense is going down, but that's not the key target here. you got to get these... Uh, Expos finished off. Looks like they did a great job there in the center of the compartment. Skeletons trying to whittle away at them, but nice heal spells coming in from Yoop are able to uh, keep them nice and healthy, finishing off all four Tezzles placed at the top here. Now, why would someone do that, Power Bang? Place all four Tezzles at the edge. That's typically a surprise strategy. Typically at Town Hall 9, the bases are guaranteed to be three-starred, but as many attacks as you can soak up, 
that limit that uh, limits the other team on how many scouts they potentially have or how many other attacks they have to clean up these Town Hall 9s. And uh, these Tesla farms, they're called on the outside of the base, makes it very difficult for an attacker on the first time where they haven't seen the location of the traps, location of the Teslas, can often cause a very big surprise. Speaks volumes to Yoop's attacking ability that he was able to wipe out that base. Was that a fresh hit, Yoop? Yeah, it was. It was indeed so many extra hogs that he didn't even have to worry about that trap. Tore through those Teslas. How did you plan for that attack, Yoop? Well, honestly, the, uh, the Queen and the CC were really um, easy to get. So it was just a hog of the base and then that's it. Got a little bit lucky there at the, at the end with that Tesla farm being at the end rather than the beginning. That's where they often get uh, thrown off a little bit. Man, good attacks uh, from you from FW, really good stuff. And I want to personally apologize to the production crew. Um, I think I may have selected the wrong option. I think we should have probably updated the iPad now to get it current. Um, but, you know, what can you do? So get we hit not now, we'll, we'll get to it later. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we got another live attack in studio. We've got one hive up next. Who is it going to be, guys? Who are you going to send to the stage? <laughs> Maddie J, come on down. One Hive is certainly under the gun right now. They're behind in this 10v10 race. It's up to Matty J to start turning things around. He is the 10v10 general for the team. He's got a 30% uh, rate of being able to take out these bases. Uh, excuse me, no, he's, he's a Town Hall 11. Pardon me, I was looking at my wrong uh, section of the notes there. But uh, he is the 10 general. Uh, he often likes to play dragons and loons, I've heard, Parbang. He, he likes dragons. Uh, I'm curious to see what he plays here on this particular dip. Drags are actually pretty strong, dipping down to hit those Town Hall 10s. And I see how you could be confused. He's got two accounts. They're both yeah. called Matty J. I mean, thanks for the <laughs> differentiation there, buddy. Yeah, appreciate it. But uh, that Town Hall 11 is his uh, method of choice right now. He's going to be going in live against Moost from FW. So, Matty J looking like he's bringing the miners. Who would have thunk it? Great attack whenever they're able to uh, just overwhelm a base. Plenty of them digging through uh, this layout here. It looks like uh, he's going to start up at the top with his Barbarian Kings and Bowlers to knock down uh, the edge buildings over there. Yeah, typically what you see with those mass minor attacks, oh you've got, uh, got funneling troops in the corners, both the heroes go down in the corners, that cleans out some of these outer buildings, and that is going to allow the miners a clear path directly through the base. Now these miners currently are taking up five housing space uh -oh. apiece, and in a very uh, near update, they're going to be taking up six. So this attack, I don't know if it's going to be viable as long, so Matty J may be using this for one of the last times. Just dropped two of his heal spells on the uh, the miners over there at the Inferno Tower. Looks like he's going to continue uh, his pressure in the center here with the Rage spell, trying to take out these buildings as quickly as possible. Wary of the Inferno in uh, the bottom compartment there, he's got another heal to try to help out some of those miners. They're distracted by the skeletons for just a little while, but I think they'll be able to get the job done nonetheless. That was a beautiful Grand Warden ability, getting all of the miners healed back up to full. The Inferno Tower is holding uh, strong for now. Uh -oh. It is doing some work. He's holding off those miners. He does get targeted finally though. Will the Inferno be able to hold? It doesn't look like it. One more hit. It is down. Oh. Last miner able to take it out and Matty J now looking like he's in control once again. Great hit there by that final miner. Might have been in a little bit of a tricky situation there if it had held up, but looks like he has plenty of troops remaining to finish off this base. Excellent hit by the one high Town Hall 10 general repping a Town Hall 11 base this time. Grabs the three crown and will keep his team in it. That was beautiful. All right, so I'm going to talk to Matty J for just a moment before we get to the replay there. I do want to explain a little bit of, uh, of drop a little knowledge on that attack. But Matty J, yes, sir. tell us what you were thinking. I mean, I kind of talked about the corner funneling and the miners. Let me know about that attack strategy. Are you, are you happy to see it kind of uh, be tweaked possibly for future updates? Do you like hitting with full miners? Or, or tell me your um, thoughts. You know what? It doesn't matter what the, what the attack is. I just do whatever gets the base three-starred. Some bases, I'll do Bowler Witch, some base Dragons, some base Miners, just whatever I think calls for. And this one was just an easy funnel for the Miners. You know, that's why I love this guy, Matty J, able to get it done with any troop, any army, any composition, a master of pretty much everything. Have I built you up enough over yes, there? Holy yes. cow. Keep it going. There's something on my nose here, I think. Anyway, let's hear it from Matty J. Holy cow. Let's get to the replay monitor as well. I want to talk a little bit about that minor attack and how it's been so prevalent as of late on the Town Hall 10. 
uh, attacks, the 11's hitting down. So basically what you have, you've got the queen coming in on the corner. Her job is to kind of clear out this whole area here. Same thing with the king on the other side. He's going to get down the base, clearing out this trash. That makes it so the miners can essentially come in at all of these angles, and their goal is to basically stay in the core. They want to get to the, uh, the meat of the base as quickly as possible, and that's exactly what Matty J did there. So that's really all we needed to see. I wanted to kind of uh, explain the attract strategy for those of you at home that may want to try this while it works for, you know, just a little while longer. Who knows? It might work longer. We'll have to wait and see. MJ certainly delivered a thriller there. Well done to him, and I think that we're going to be tossing it back over to the other side of the studio. We've got faked WGM. Are they ready to send the next attack in? Yeah, I'm going. All right, Felix. Felix, 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 Felix. I don't know why I love chanting that guy's name. That's <laughs> uh, kind of weird. I think this is a second attack, though, so I probably won't have to do it in the, uh, in the future. You're a fanboy. Hey, it's safe to admit it, Power Bank. What can I say? Felix, a man of few words this week. He's got one of the brightest smiles I've ever seen, though. He's going to be getting ready to go in here for FW, trying to secure a three-star. He's getting ready. He knows yeah, well that dance. actions speak louder than words. He's going to be going in with a heavy attack, looking for that three-star. Uh, I can report, by the way, also that Fake WGM making another attack onto One Hive. Uh, Bob, one of their Town Hall 11s, is getting one in right now uh, against ASAP AK. Got the three star. But uh, as Felix preps for his next attack, we'll be hopping into that soon, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. Let us let us know in chat, by the way, if you're cheering for Fake WGM or One Hive. They got one hour left, and I know that you're seeing some of the best Clash of Clans ever right now. If you're learning new strategies or loving these bases, tell us. That's awesome, uh, awesome stuff, Woody. We have Felix in live now. He's taken on Indicate from One Hive. He's going to be bringing the Valkyries to get all the way to the core. Now, this personally is one of my favorite attack strategies. There is nothing better than watching a whole group of redheads all angry in a rage spell, taking out all kinds of a base. So we're going to watch here as he gets some easy percentage on the top side of the base and the bottom side on that right side. And now it's all about the funnel. Can he funnel well enough to get those troops into the core? Quad Quake spell is going to be used with the additional fifth Quake to soften up the Town Hall and perhaps the Eagle in the core. We'll have to wait and see where he chooses to go with that fifth Quake spell. A tectonic, Teutonic tumble. He's making a big move up in the top with an Archer Queen, trying to take out some of those edge bases. I like what you said there, though, Power Bang. These ladies are uh, making their way toward the center. They need to get that Town Hall down. Felix is going to try to go for the two-star here. Uh, in fact, he is stepping up uh, and hitting up, in fact, to go up against this Town Hall Would 11. you look at that? There's a Valkyrie on the other side, and what? she's like, listen, I'm the biggest, baddest redhead of them all. And uh, she takes out, like, four Valkyries on the offensive side before the main group comes in. So Swings here we go. Trap. It's on. There's that rage we talked about. Through the wall they go into the core. Are they going to go the right way? That's the question. Oh, I don't know. We got a nice big rage spell helping them out. There They're they trying go. to make their way in. A few of them do. They're going to have to take out this Inferno Tower first, but some of them have locked onto the Town Hall. They're swinging away. This Barbarian King trying to get the work done as so well, but skellies. I think it's a little bit too late. The Skellies have kept them off their intended target, and with that, Felix is not going to be able to get that two-star. So many Skellies. Good try to Felix. Nice try, man. Difficult attack. Always love watching the Valkyries do their work. But this time, they fell a little bit short. So, nice try to Felix. Unfortunately, didn't go his way. We do have another attack for you. We got a live one, and we've got fake WGM Fry Black taking on Island Nomad, and he's got the entry coming live right now. Hog Riders are going to be following up for the second half of this attack. Valkyries being trickled in, loving to see the Valkyries in the action. Sometimes you just don't see them as often as you would like, and there's been a lot of them used today. Barbarian King trying to wallop some of the defenses here, but can't take out the Archer Queen. That is really unfortunate. Friblack still going to be going in at the top left. Hog Riders screaming through the towers as he's tearing through some of these defenses. Springtrap sends a few of them away, but it's attacking this Inferno Tower. That's going to be his biggest threat next. The Archer Queen tearing through the remainder of this push, though. Poison trying to take her out, but that's not going to be quite enough just yet. She destroys a bunch of those poor Hog Riders. Cooked Bacon is on the mini tonight, Power Bang. That's exactly right, uh, Woody. We had that Inferno Tower. A big investment on the Kill Squad there. Uh, the heroes as well as a jump spell, and it just wasn't possible to get the Queen or the Inferno Tower. Definitely went south at that point. A whole lot of giant bombs in the Inferno compar uh, compartment as well, and that's going to end the attack early. 57% two-star for Fry Black. 
Looking for the three star there, but a very difficult defensive setup. Couldn't quite crack through. I think it's time for another studio attack, though. Why don't we send it back over to our friends at One Hive? Do you guys have an attack ready for us? Sure, I'll go again. Let's do it, Peril. Peril's going back up again for a second time, ladies and gentlemen. Looking forward to a juicy attack from Caro, a war general for One Hive. He's an expert at that 10v11 game, but they've already managed to crack through all of the Town Hall 11s over on the FW side. Probably more likely that he's going to be going for a 10v10 attack. You know, I don't see him three-starring the Town Hall 11s, Woody, so I think that's probably a good estimation in your uh, part. But it's always nice when you're a specialist on one thing, and that one thing is already done before you get there. Yeah. I mean, that obviously means they've been efficient. So uh, we are going to be looking at Perro taking on Thomas here. Perro, the top Town Hall 10 for one hive. He's going to be dropping down to hit number 20. And it looks like he's going to be bringing that Queen Walk Bowlers that you referred to earlier as being his favorite attack. Indeed, sends in a haste line of balloons trying to make their way in to get a few of those fences out. Takes down two of them and uh, gets a little close to the air defense there, but didn't quite finish it off. Uh, not necessary to totally finish uh, that, that attack off, though. He, he's mainly going on the ground-based attack, so just getting a little bit of a funnel over on the right side is, is what he's going for here. Golem to start things off and try to soak some damage here. Baby Dragon does go down, but this Golem taking a lot of damage from uh, these bowlers is going to give them an opportunity to try to get in there. Rage spell on top of this Inferno, and they're getting awfully close, starting to make their way onto the right side of the base. CC gets pulled out. It's a Lava Hound and Balloon combo. Power Bang, what are we looking at here? This is looking really solid so far. This is uh, a, a scenario where the bowlers managed to avoid the giant bombs in that compartment, and they are zipping right across the base, going over the second jump spell, cutting this thing off, and trying to take out the second Inferno Tower. The giant bombs are triggered. The King uses his ability, takes out the... Uh, actually, he hasn't popped his ability yet. There it Ew. is. Oh my goodness, this thing is looking really sharp. It's a matter of time now, guys. The defenses are all in range for the Queen, except the Tesla that is right here. Oh. So we'll see what the Queen decides to do. She skips over it for now. She's going to lock on to the uh, enemy Lava Hound here. Yeah. This is going to be really close, guys. A lot of cleanup left to do. No cleanup troops left, but he's got a lot left on the field. Guys in the chat, let's hear it. We got a three star on our hands, or are we going to have a time fail? We still have the queen with her ability left. This is going to be really, really close. The biggest thing is that Tesla right there. They're going to have to come back through it, and it looks like a lot of walls are going to have to be gone through. This is going to be an intense ending, though, to an amazing raid by Pero. Pops down that Lava Hound, and the pups jump out, providing a little bit more of a time sink for this Archer Queen. She's going to be able to take them out one at a time. They're trying to finish off some of these ground attackers, but Pero just still has such a massive force. Most of the bowlers getting healed up on the back that I think he's going to be able to wipe out uh, this north section of the base. You're right, though, Power Bang. It's just a matter of time whether or not he's going to be able to get to that Tesla in the bottom corner. He still has another minute, though, and it looks like uh, with quite a bit of DPS, he's going to be able to make that march. You saw that he just popped that Queen ability there, trying to get them uh, a little bit more DPS from the archers, but they unfortunately went down to the bomb. This all depends on the Queen right now. What path is she going to take to get to that Tesla? Will she go around and beat through one set of walls? I don't think she's going to have enough time to get through the wall and get there on time. Only 25 seconds left after she takes out these buildings here. This is going to be really close, but unfortunately, I think he's going to run a little bit short on time. Oh. This is what, what I'm talking about. She is going to be targeting uh, that wall, oh. and it, unfortunately, it's going to be going through two sets of walls as it will be required uh, that she shoots over another one as well. Oh. So it's going to come to an unfortunate end. Let's hear it for Pero, man. That was a, an amazing 99% attack. Probably would have liked the 100, but hey, man, that was a solid effort. Really good execution there. Great attempt there, but one building separates you from two stars and the coveted three couldn't quite nail down that last Tesla. And, you know, Power Bang, I don't know if there's anything that he could have done differently to try to make it go down. It just sometimes goes up to the luck of the draw, it seems. Luck of the draw is painful sometimes, and I really don't think there's anything he could have done. Let's talk to Pero and ask him. Pero, I saw the look of anguish on your face as you left the stage. A little bit of <laughs> anger, a little bit of sadness as that queen chose to hit the wall on the far side of the base, required. She goes through two layers of walls instead of one. I still don't know if you would have had enough time. No, but what happened there, man? I Are you proud of the attack? I would not have, but uh, I, m I made a couple of mistakes. I should have uh, used my minions and archers differently to uh, to allow the queen to take even less of a time going ar around the whole base, and maybe then they would have gotten back to the Tesla. 
All right, man. Well, I'm proud of you. Good try. It was uh, really good stuff from One Hive there. We've got fake WGM live now. Bob is in on Zane. And uh, let's cut to that here real quickly as this is a dip and uh, it is not going well oh, as of no. yet. So this could be a turning point as well. One Hive already has failed one dip and uh, fake WGM trying to avoid that same fate. The miners are all over the base, but unfortunately the Inferno Tower has been missed. Now he does still have a heal spell left over, so he could, if those miners group up, he could get a bunch of them all, th all at the same time healed up. But if they spread out and uh, he's only able to get a few, that's gonna be really difficult for him. They remain relatively spread and it looks like this Grand Warden's having a little bit of difficulty as well, the Lava Hound. Doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but he's just about to get, to get taken out. That's a big uh, defensive bonus for Bob if he can keep it up. Uh, trying to support these miners as they go into the last compartment of the base here. Baby Dragon has took a little bit of damage, but it goes down pretty quickly to the Seeking Air Mine there. Holy cow, Woody, this is really close. He's got a really thick group of miners here, but let's key on the Wizard Tower. Will the Wizard Tower be able to thin out this group of miners before it goes down? No! Not much splash damage left over in the base. He's got an Expo. How many hit points does it have? It looks like it's full health, guys. This is going to be super close. Will the miners be able to do it? They split, and it looks like they get sprung. The Expo is going to hold them off here. Oh, no, down to the final three buildings. Oh. Spring Chat takes a lot of them out, and that might have been the decisive blow that keeps Zane's tower alive. Zane 46 with an Inferno Tower. This is the final moments of the attack. Distraction from the Air Sweepers helping him out a little bit, but the Inferno oh Tower itself gosh. is only down to half hit points. A few miners digging their way toward the Inferno Tower. Final swings go off, but the Inferno Tower stands. Oh, Defensive victory that. for one hive as Bob's dip fail has not been able to take that tower out. Oh. You know, I'm not even part of the team, Woody, and it feels like I just got stabbed right in the gut. That was painful to watch, that Inferno Tower withstanding a little bit of uh, an early assault there. And then not only that, I don't know if you saw, there was a baby dragon that trailed in at the end of that raid, and it got sniped by a Seeking Air Mine. If it would have got off one shot onto the Inferno Tower, the miners may have been able to finish it off for the three-star. But unfortunately for FW, One Hive's defense prevailed, and now the dip fails are even and this is back to a horse race. Sometimes things just don't go your way, Power Bang. We've seen it before on the other side of the arena, so it's only fair that it happened to uh, FW once or twice. But let's go send it over to those guys in studio. I think that they've got another attack that they've been cooking up. And uh, yes, indeed, Wiz, I think he's ready to take this uh, podium again with another attack. I love it. Let's hear it for Wiz, guys. All right, so one thing I really love about Wiz yep. is we're up here talking, we're doing the stream thing, we're you know doing commentator stuff, and we're like, all right, One Hive's got an attack coming up. Let's look over there. They're all amongst themselves talking. FW's got an attack coming up. They're all amongst themselves talking. Well, when Wiz is up to attack, we look over and we say FW. He is like halfway standing up, foot on the table, eyes are locked to mine, and he's like, I'm ready to go. So you know this guy is locked in, ready to do some work. Wiz is uh, very passionate, and we're going to see if we can uh, get that successful three-star attack right now. One of the best base builders in all of Clash of Clans. Loves building them up and then tearing them down. He's going to go in against the number 11 player from One Hive. Attempting to get the three star. Wiz sets up a bunch of bowlers in the back. Looks like he's got witches to support them as well. Ground based offensive uh, from the fake WGM player here. Looking great on the funnel once again. Bowlers on both sides of the base. Witch is going with them. Little bit of issue on the bowlers on the le on the right side here. Going around the outside, he only has two break off, but that's probably okay. Looking good. The heroes are behind the uh, bowlers heading into the base. Golem stalling a little bit, and that's going to cause some early damage to come onto the heroes. They are going to uh, take some damage here going into the backside of the base. Last jump spell is down. And a rage here. He's got to. He's got to pray for some skips at this point to get to these uh, these inferno towers before he melts those troops. But these bowlers, really, uh, chucking some strong rocks right now. There's the jump. Here is the the throw. They do nice. get the inferno. The second inferno is down as well. But unfortunately, as we kind of called out earlier, those bowlers thinning out on the outside of this base oh. leaves a lot of responsibility on the witch. He left the best for last. The Archer Queen's getting a lot of value here, but I think that locked onto the wall now. She might be uh, taken out by this Archer Tower up top. Which is in bowlers. Going down, this yeah. mortar going down is key, Woody, because uh, okay. nothing left besides point defense. 
and with plenty of uh, skeletons that those witches have been spawning this whole time, that'll provide a little bit of insulation for the bowlers here. They're going to start getting taken down, though. A few boulders thrown at the cannon. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to finish off this archer tower, though. It's getting awfully close, power bang. Oh the witch gets gosh. distracted. She's not going for the archer tower. It's looking like another 99%, guys. Oh, what a heartbreaker for Wiz. This, is not, oh, this is not over, though. Hold on. The bowler's still there. Skelly's blocking for him. The archer tower doing its best to take that thing out. It goes down to half hit points. This just is not as soon as over. it does. Is the witch going to be able to get the job done over She's here? She's going to eventually get through the wall here. It's all about can she have enough skeletons out in front to tank? Oh, man, this is this is insane right now, guys. It might just be a matter of when those skeletons spawn, if they're in uh, rotation at the right time for the witch to be able to uh, ha you know, have them out in front to block. It's taken a long time to get through this wall. I, th it, I think you're right. He's eventually going to do it, but it's just a waiting game at this let's point. Let's check the hit points on the archer tower. He's got half health on the archer tower. Now, that archer tower is doing the best it can to thin out these skeletons. Now, the previous attacks, we had people kind of uh, sitting up on the podium uh, you know, <laughs> waiting. Oh, you're killing me, man. You're ruining the surprise. Oh, but we are uh, trying to get our best to get through the wall. We've got somebody who may have forced closed and uh, knows the result early. But uh, the witch trying to get through the wall here, down to 16 seconds. Oh, man. Off we close. She breaks through, summons some skeletons, and starts her march, but has pretty short range relative to this Antarctic. archer tower. Oh. Mm takes the target and does not get any hits off. The Skeleton's doing their best, but Larry can't finish off the tower this time. Holy cow. Incredible attack from Wiz. That was unbelievably close. It, it, honestly, if, if one of the troops had gone any different direction there, that could have ended up in three. But unfortunately, Wiz is going to have to settle for 199% for his performance here in the CWL Finals. I don't think that that's something he's going to be disappointed with. Let's ask him, though. Wiz, unfortunately, you fell a little bit short there. 99% on your second attack. What went wrong there, man? Um, well, yeah, I misclicked something, unfortunately. Like, I dropped um, the CC instead of um, a few bowlers. So more bowlers walk than I intended to uh, walk. Um, yeah, well, I think we can clean it up. So um, I'm still happy with the result. And it's, it's pretty good, yeah. It was a very, very strong attack. I think you definitely can probably model something off of that and make some very slight tweaks to get that three star. Yeah. So nice work. Let's hear it for Wiz. On the other side of the studio, the One Hive guys have been sweating bullets, but they managed to hold on to that base at the very last moment. However, a defensive victory is not going to be enough to take this war. They're going to have to go on the attack again. Who are you guys going to be sending in next? We actually have no one ready. No one is ready at this moment. All right. Well, Power Bang, do you think that we've got a replay we can queue up? Oh, absolutely we do. But first, I want to bring up the war score so we can catch everybody up on home. It's been fast and furious here in the studio. We have a little bit of a, a gap opening up right now. We've got fake WGM. Many consider them the favorites. And they are now up by seven stars. 99 to 92. They have used two more attacks so far. But the key statistics are on the 10v10 attacks where FW has secured their fifth and they just launched another one that uh, is a 99% good chance they're going to be wrapping up a sixth on that one here if they can clean it up successfully. One Hive on the other hand they have three so far which is respectable but they are trailing FW at this point in the war. A dip fail a piece, but it seems like it's still relatively neck and neck. One Hive certainly still in it. Remember, uh, if our uh, overlay here is correct, there is still one three-star attack left to be done on a Town Hall 9 base uh, from their opponents. You know that they're going to be able to wipe that out relatively easily. Uh, it's all coming down to this 10 game, this 10v10 game. Absolutely. Speaking of 10v10 game, let's go ahead and check out one of the earlier 10v10s that happened from fake WGM. We had Big Ears taking on Rocky from One Hive, and Big Ears is bringing 11 hogs, 10 bowlers in this one, guys. One of my favorite attacks of the war so far, because you just didn't think it was going to get there. Only 11 hog riders brought in the army composition, and he did not take out an Inferno early in this raid. So at the very beginning, you're going to see some funneling up top with that minion. Beautifully done there and then a queen walk to go clockwise around this base and ultimately meet up with the bulk of the kill squad you see one golem in the army comp as well gonna eventually drop the king in behind 
These are some of my favorite attacks, Power Bang. The absolute Hail Mary, throwing a huge hit onto your opponents and just hoping that it sticks somewhere. This queen having a little bit of difficulty up on the top as the he healer's just out of range of that initial heal spell. But now that the deployment has been set up properly, she's going to be able to wail away at the top uh, of this base setup, making her way down uh, to the 2 o'clock position, taking some damage from the expo, but nothing that she can't handle. Finishes off the town hall, and it's just about time to set up for the second stage of this attack. Big Ears is going to be sending in, just like you said, hog riders and bowlers to get the damage in there with one uh, Golem, we call that a cold-blooded entry. Notice the uh, archers on the bottom of this base already working on this trash down here. They're trying to clear this out, so eventually the king and the bowlers, when they walk down the wall, the jump spell will lead them into the base rather than walking around the outside from the breadcrumbs that are those, uh, those trash buildings, the elixir collectors, the gold mines on the outside of the base. Right now the queen is joining up with the king, joining up with the bowlers, everything starting to mount, the momentum getting going here. They break into the wall, the jump spell is down, here comes the CC. Everything going to plan so far for Big Ears. Great Poison Spell will be able to take out that balloon and another one chipping away at the defensive Archer Queen over there. The CC has been finished off as the bowlers roll through that big rocky creature. Golem goes down and Big Ears from Fake WGM is flattening the defenses from One Hive's Rahi. So I'm going to pause it really quickly. Who here thinks with 11 hogs uh, left that this base is going to fall? I mean, unreal amount of momentum that he picks up with this uh, the attack, with the amount that he has remaining. He's got some bowlers working on the top side. He's got the queen that helps out with the inferno tower. And then he reinforces with the CC hog riders here as they head into the backside of the base. They eat an early giant bomb. At that point, I thought, man, this is going to be pretty tough for him to uh, get the three star on. Look at all the bombs he's triggering. So not bad stuff at all. The queen pops the ability, and look at her come to the rescue, though. Over the wall she goes, taking out the level two Inferno. Hog Riders are going to get to those final few defenses, and this is going to work out for Big Ears. Beautifully done. He gets those last few things taken care of with the Wizards. Unbelievable attack here from the FW, guys. Archer Queen taking out both of those Inferno Towers got the job done. She can rest easy tonight knowing that she took care of her targets. But with that power bank, I think that it is now indeed time to send it back to our friends over at One Hive. They are ready to send in their next wave. That's right. They've deliberated. They've uh, studied. Who's it going to be? I'm ready after the night. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, all right. Apparently there's a live attack now. We're receiving instructions from Chris to go watch that first before he moves to the stage. <laughs> all right. It may not be the live that he wants to see, but that's the risk you run when you tell the commentators <laughs> to control the, uh, the stream. We're going to be watching Dufine or Dauphine, whichever he prefers, take on the notorious P.I.G., probably my favorite name from either <laughs> clan. The notorious P.I.G. going to try to defend here against this bowler riders? witch tip attack. What's that? You think he likes hog riders? Uh, pro probably the notorious P.I.G. Uh, we don't see any uh, going up against his base, probably uh, fearing the name here, but it does oh. look like bowler witch is the combo, and it's going right at those inferno towers at the front side of this base. Dauphine, fine, looking fine. The hammer is being swung onto Notorious P.I.G.'s base. Lava Hound pops in the defensive CC is not going to be able to keep this big ground base push off. Queen popping most of those guys down. Get a little bit of help from the wi uh, wizard in there as well as the rage spell is launched into the base. Huge assault from Dauphine as all of the defenses are starting to get cracked here. No point defense can keep this huge wave of attackers off the base. Both of those Inferno Towers going down. All three heroes still looking relatively healthy with a queen ability still in tow. Looking really sharp here for uh, Do... I don't even know where to go with that name. I, I probably should have called him up and said, hey, how do you pronounce it? But we did not. So Dauphine, Dauphine, Dauphine. Uh, we are going to rock and roll on this base. This is looking really good. All kinds of bowlers. Lots of witches left over. We've got three heroes, all of them pretty much full health. Woody, I, I think it's safe to say that this is going to be a three-star yeah, for a fake he's gonna, WGM. He's going to do just fine. So looking sharp here, that's uh, 99 all the way up to 100%. Taking out that dark elixir storage. Let's hear it for fake WGM. And with that monster hit, Fake WGM is actually moving ahead of the 100 star mark. Crucial uh, point in this war now. They're getting very close to their max range. Fake WGM managed to get 114 stars in their last war. That's about the highest you could expect uh, from a battle of this magnitude. But with that, I think One Hive has seen that last attack. It was not a dip fail. So you got a lot of pressure on you. What have you got to show for us today? 
Chris is ready? Yeah. Chris is ready. All right, let's see it, man. He's been working the plan over there. Watching his guys, they uh, they went in. Ra, he was the live attack he was for, uh, referring to. Uh, we watched the FW attack. The One Hive guys were going in at the exact same time. Unfortunately, we got to make a choice here. Can't watch them all. Uh, but it did uh, not work out. Ra, he falls a little bit short on Stoss. We'll check the, uh, the score here after Chris's attack. But Chris is prepping now to get ready to go in for that three-star attack. Two jump. Right Making one last check to make sure that he's got the right spell set up here, consulting with his uh, team out back. And that's something that I love about this game, Power Bang. There's so uh, much emphasis on the team aspect here. You got to rely on your buddies to have your back. They know the plan of the, the attack probably just about as well as you do. Uh, and being able to recite the exact spell line up there, uh, very helpful, giving him a little bit of a confidence boost as he starts this uh, next hit. Absolutely. It's very uh, collaborative. You can see uh, Chris is. Uh, going to be getting in. Here we go. We've got the attack starting now. We've got the queen starting on the bottom right, working on the uh, queen walk portion of this. A hay spell is going to lead five balloons in to take out the exact same thing we saw earlier, where we get the archer tower taken out. They fall a little bit short, but he's going to be trying to emulate what happened earlier, perhaps with a few tweaks, and ultimately end up with that three-star. Jump spell going down at the 3 o'clock mark as a golem starts to make his way into the base. This has been a tough one to crack for the One Hive guys. Will this be the attack that finally takes Thomas down? Uh, the funnel was slow to develop there on the army camp, and he's going to have some walk issues. The bowlers are going to cruise around, or they might come back. Look at that. They're going to cooperate, guys. He he's going to rejoin the army. Giant bomb. I think that was really important, right? Oh, absolutely. Bowlers typically, unlike uh, the uh, Valkyries, they will stay back a little bit, and the golems typically trigger the giant bomb for them, which is, is definitely helpful. So here we go, pushing to the back side of the base. Golem uh, leading the charge is now popped and gone. The king is also gone. This attack's losing steam quickly, Oof. and it does look like it is all out of luck here for Chris. He's going to fall short on this one uh, by quite a bit. Good try to him, though. Didn't quite manage to take out that balloon. Might have been a little bit of trouble for him. Massive uh, splash damage. It's able to drop on the attacking troops. And without any uh, anti-air, it seems like Chris just kind of ran out of uh, steam a, a little bit earlier than expected. Well done to him, though. Nice effort, even though it didn't uh, wind up going in his favor. Fake WGM will hold on to that lead. Uh, One Hive still in it, though. They've got uh, plenty of attacks left. Power bang. Looks like even maybe 18 for this last half hour to spend. Absolutely. So, Chris, good try, man. It was a wonderful effort, but it didn't quite work out this time. All right, guys. So, not quite what One Hive was hoping for. They need to catch up quickly on the Town Hall 10s before this thing spirals out of control. The FW guys are maintaining a lead at this point. A couple Town Hall 10 triples. Let's check the war uh, stats really quickly so we can see where this thing is at going into the last 30 minutes of war. There we go. It looks like uh, we've got the 10v10s, 3 to 5 right now. One Hive with 3, FW with 5. It looks like One Hive still in the lead on the 10v11 game. They have, again, wrapped up their attacks, five of them uh, already done, whereas fake. WGM has only four, so they've got to get one more done there, and each clan right now with a dip fail on the 11v10s. That being said, though, we do have another live attack probably coming in shortly from the FW side. Is anyone ready to go over here? He's ready. Yeah, I got it. All right. Good. He's got it. Looking confident. The general for fake WGM is marching to the stage. TTD Black. A hog rider aficionado. Wonder if he'll be bringing uh, that in today, or maybe something different. One hog in this one. Oh, just one, just one. He's All got right. one hog, a token hog. <laughs> Here we go. Let's go with. Uh, I don't know what he's going with. We'll have to wait and see when he gets into the base. He's uh, taking the position right now, bending over, getting ready to click and click and click some more. Checking the army composition. Like you said earlier, though, such a collaborative game. You see all these guys uh, on the uh, each team, a lot of them wearing earbuds. Not so much for black, but those earbuds, you know, they do have their clan mates in there giving them some advice, some information, and that is obviously super helpful at times, but it can also distract them if they talk at the wrong time. Certainly could, but having someone over your shoulder just giving you a little bit of a hint here and there if you're, you know, about to miss something really important, very uh, helpful in a lot of these stressful situations. You know, just don't want to miss your queen ability. Make sure you get all the spells down at the exact right time. If something surprising happens, they can, you know, shout into your ear. But with that, uh, I think that we're just about ready to get into this attack. TTD Black is going to be going up against the number 11 defender from One Hive. His name is Hungsport. 
It reminds me of a sport. Uh, all right, well, we've got TT Black going in. He's going to be bringing bowlers and witches and the one hog. He's got one goblin in there as well, so it looks like he's well-versed in bringing all kinds of troops. I like that goblin over here, though, as you can see, out of range of all defense, able to very efficiently take down. Look at that, almost as fast as the wizard took down the gold mine. He's able to get the one taken care of with the goblin as well, so really efficient use of one troop space over there. True to his word, did send in that one hog rider. Looks like the bulk of this attack is going to be from bowlers and witches, though. TTD Black has the golems doing a little bit of protection there, but one of them's already popped, the golemite uh, on the bottom there, moving its in toward the wizard tower, and it's the same line of attack here. All of these troops stacking up at this 5 o'clock position, just about to make their way into the base. Oh, no, a few bowlers have gone off in the wrong direction. Will that is go not back? good at all, Power Bang. Only one of them go back. He has had some... Oh, wait, oh, wait what are oh. they doing? Fantasy they off an archer first before they make their way to the bottom side of the base. Maybe he'll be able to pull this thing off anyways. The Archer Queen trying to pop down the dragon with a rage spell, finally, to try to give some more fuel to this attack. But it looks like the gas has run out of this push. Unfortunately, uh, Black making his way into the center here now. Has got a big attack uh, still left. He's got to deal with these Inferno Towers, though. They can provide a huge roadblock here. Last time we saw uh, this attack, it was a very close 99% with just that Archer Tower standing. Do you think he's going to be able to get that close again, Power Bang? Uh, not this time. Too many bowlers walked. Unfortunately, this attack is all about the big mo momentum and he lost it early with those bowlers walking around the side those inferno towers very deep in the base he needs to have so many bowlers that the inferno towers can't lock on to the entire army that's up there he's got to have some of them staying safe and unfortunately that did not happen for black this raid uh, but it was uh, a valiant effort i do i do feel that the plan is a good plan it's just a matter of execution at this point and again the finest detail the just the smallest misclick on uh, the tiles can send send in those troops to the wrong direction. It's all about timing, and unfortunately this time, the timing did not work out for Black. Nice attempt there at Black, but it's very difficult in a fight as close as this. You, you know, your, your attack in war just cannot run out of gas. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, it seems like it did that time. Nice uh, hit into the bottom right compartment. That seems to be the preferred uh, lane to get those troops into the center. What went wrong there? Um, well, I went to switch my troops. I tapped the button. The rage well, the jump didn't go down, and then the rage didn't go down. So by that time, it was just, it was over because the jump didn't get down. Hmm. Jump, put down. Sometimes you touch pads. Doesn't happen, so. Hey, it was a good try to black. Yeah. Not, not too shabby at all, but hey, we got a live attack going right now, and it's from none other than Chief Pat. Who? Not the real Chief Pat. <laughs> but he's real, but he's, he's not the Chief Pat you probably know. Uh, we've got Chief Pat from FW taking on Chubbs from One Hive, and he's bringing Bowlers and Witches again. Double jump spell to get him deep up in this base. He's going to start by going towards the Inferno Tower, getting this thing taken out early, and hopefully before the Golem arrives on the scene. It is the case. Skeletons and Golem running around trying to distract those Bowlers, but a great Grand Warden ability early is going to keep everything more or less at full health heading into the core. An absolutely devastating tribe of troops from Chief Pat reaches the center of the compartment here and will start to try to wail away at the uh, inside, rotting it from within. Giant Bomb does go off on those bowlers, giving them a little bit of trouble there, but they're still quite healthy. Nice tanking out in front from the Barbarian King will keep them uh, nice and uh, well positioned to finish off the remainder of this base. Archer Queen pops down a few more defenses before making her way onto this Inferno Tower, finishes it off, and uh, putting the damper on Chubbs' defenses here. Looks like One Hive is going to suffer a third uh, star here as Chief Pat, the Town Hall 11 player, is going to be able to finish it off. Yes, this time the uh, the Inferno Tower does go down. The uh, jump spell and Queen were adjusted slightly, so that she goes in, takes out the Inferno, rather than having that be the last thing standing, and at this point, just basically mowing down all those bowlers and witches that are remaining standing. If only we had a fast-forward button, we know this thing is done. It is a 99% right now, about to be 100. Chief Pat from Faked WGM getting the three-star. Oh, baby, a triple takes him down, and I think that it's just about time to move back to another attack. Power Bang, what are we looking at here in the lineup of the war? I know we've got less than half an hour left. Fake WGM is ahead, 105 stars to 94, but uh, 
I, I, I think that there's still plenty left to be said. One Hive loves to go for the comeback here, and it uh, looks like we've got another live attack going yeah, on. Yeah, long way to go for One Hive right now. They're down by 11 stars with only seven attacks remaining for them. A fake WGM only has four remaining. They have 76 out of 80 attacks used thus far, and they are sitting in a very comfortable lead at the moment. But anything can happen. A lot of key attacks have yet to be used, and the key stat right now are the Town Hall 11 versus 10s. They are equal on dips. It's just a matter of if the Town Hall 10s on One Hive can execute, and execute they will. Queen Kia here just a little bit earlier from One Hive doing work on this base with an entry from the top of the base. 20 Hog Riders in tow. She is going to be dropping those from the right side of the base as well. Here come the Hogs, and they're going to trounce their way all the way to that Inferno Tower where a freeze will be waiting. Moving in to try to smash it. That freeze spell is absolutely crucial for these Hogs. Necessary to keep that big, heavy uh, Inferno from heating them all up. Beautiful Big old. surgical deployment there on the bottom. The Hogs are, are going to cruise through this base. Queen Kia getting it done. Beautiful job. Let's hear it for Queen Kia. Wow. We're going to go try to catch another live attack, though. Let's do it. Two live attacks right now. We've got a smorgasbord of options to pick from. Power Bang, which one are we going to look at? We're going to look at Juski. He uh, illustrated a beautiful attack earlier. We kind of went over the fundamentals with Juski. Uh, that's not a new segment uh, on my channel quite yet, but hey, we'll, uh, we'll work with it. We've got the Baby Dragons and the Valkyries. Some would call this the Baby Drag. I think I've heard of this one before, guys. We are trimming the outside percentage. All these buildings falling down, and ultimately, here come the Valkyries. They're designed to go to the core to pick up that two-star on the Town Hall by getting that second star. A few more wall breakers able to break into that bottom compartment. Nice positioning uh, of those max level walls there, trying to keep the troops out. It's a heavy handed hit and the tower goes down. The town hall has been defeated. That's the first star, but can he get to 50%? There's not many troops left for Juski. Oh, he oh. falls just short. 48% Juski from FW leaving up Indicut. He's going to have one star on this base to finish this thing off. And it looks like One Hive is staying alive right now. Oh my goodness, this is absolutely insane to close out this war. We do have another live attack. Uh, we're going to try to get into it here. Oh, Max taking on Fry Black. We will see if we can uh, get our way into this one. I'm clicking, though. I'll try, too. Oh, my goodness. Would love to see this one. I see that the 50% has been destroyed. Big Town Hall 11 attack from Fake WGM, or excuse me, from One Hive moving in against Fake WGM, rather. Uh, moving against the Town Hall 10, uh, Fry Black. Ooh, this Not is looking gonna have solid. a good time when this uh, hit goes through, but this is looking oh. solid. This is a dip attack. This is a Town Hall 11 hitting the 10. We've seen the entry uh, has already passed, and uh oh, Springs. Oh, wow. Uh oh, this is looking uh, like it's gone off the rails. We've got CC troops. It oh, this is oh, oh. just uh oh. Applause from the fake WGM side, recognizing that this is not going uh, the way that Omiaksu planned. One Hive having a difficult time finishing off this base. About to finish off uh, the last uh, defense is up on top, but Hogs splitting once again, not looking too good at all. There's a couple of cleanup troops still left in tow, though. Two wizards uh, for Omaksu, but oh, not man. looking. Uh, likely to be able to get the this third star here. This is one of the last things that One Hive wanted or needed at this point in the war. They were even on dip fails at this point, but unfortunately they just creeped ahead in a stat they do not want to own. We've got two dip fails now for One Hive. They've got some serious uphill climbing to do to finish out this war. Let's go ahead and back out and take a look at our war stats right now and get an idea of where things stand with only 20 minutes to go in the war. So Omax is going to finish up on his uh, attack here. We've got faked WGM with 77 attacks used. Only three more to go, and one of those will be live here in studio. We've got 105 stars for fake WGM, and we've got 96 stars now for One Hive. They've got 74 attacks used out of 80, which means they have six left to go. Holy cow, guys. This is going to be intense coming down to the wire, and One Hive's got some... Uh, some work to do. We'll see if they can get it done. They've got nine, maybe even uh, 12 relatively easy stars if they can just move in against these Town Hall 10 bases and get some uh, stellar hits. That could potentially put them all the way up to one away, but Fake WGM still has a few attacks left of their own. They could definitely uh, go at an untouched base over on uh, One Hive's side. Chris is still uh, very fresh, hasn't been hit yet. So uh, lots of potential for them to be able to strike back and try to tear into One Hive as well. We're waiting for the next live attack. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, looks like Lord Byron, relatively cool here. You feeling confident over there? 
Confidence, yes. Like oh, I said, confidence. the Town Hall 9's just kicking their feet up. Oh. Just relaxing, enjoying their time here. Gotta love it. So we've got CPAL going in right now against Neo Sterix. This is the third hit on this base, the first one being a 99% uh, really, really solid opening plan. The second one didn't quite go to plan. And uh, CPAL here from Fake WGM is going to show us how it's done on the cleanup here. He gets his troops in to the core, and the goal is to take out all all of these air defenses in a line in the core. And look at this, the queen going over to the right, she's gonna get the one in the core with the help of the bowlers. The one on the uh, far right goes down. And look at these bowlers and king mopping up in the inside part of this base. The queen with her ability still left, still even able to hop on over to the Inferno Tower and uh, help take that out as well. So just a massive entry here on this base. And it's now time for that Lalo attack coming in from the north side of this base. Key point here behind the air sweepers. They really didn't even have any obstruction as they headed to this base. Last little uh, obstacle here, the air defense and Inferno Tower cluster on the bottom side there. Looks like we currently have a three star advantage uh, on the dip versus 10v10 uh, in favor of fake WGM. Now they haven't managed to finally take out uh, that Town Hall 11 over on one hive side. It might wind up being an 11v11 uh, if they can't find someone to get the job done toward the end here. But with 18 minutes left in the war, uh, we still have a good nine attacks that are gonna be executed by these guys trying to get the turnaround from one hive. <laughs> That's it, gonna wrap up that last attack. It's gonna get hairy here in a moment, I have a feeling, so. And you're a pretty hairy guy already. No, no, no. <laughs> you can't put that out there, Woody, you just can't. We've got 105 stars for fake WGM. We've got 96 for one hive. Let's kick it over to Philip really quickly here. Philip, what is your clan gotta do to hold off one hive as we, uh, you know, try to get into this last 15 minutes of war or so? Uh, it's really close right now, and uh, I think we just have to go perfect on our last three hits. Excellent. Who do you have in store for your last three? You've got yourself for one, and then who else is still left to go? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. I've just been focusing on my hit, so... Um. Like, as you should. I put you on the spot there unfairly, <laughs> perhaps. But, uh, you know, I wish you the best of luck on yours. It'll be coming up towards the end of the broadcast here. So Thank you. we've got some lives coming, guys. It looks like there are six for one hive still to go, three for FW. And I really want to get to those here in just a moment. 17 minutes left to go in the war. So we're going to be averaging like one every two and a half minutes here. We know that the fight is going to be stirring up pretty soon. I was listening to TTD Black when he was a guest over on the official CWL podcast uh, hosted by Rudax and Murtag. He predicted that they would be going up against One Hive in the finals. They were actually the clan that got you really energized and interested in Clash of Clans originally. How are you feeling with 15 minutes left in this war? A little nervous. A little nervous? Intense. Is that an understatement? Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> um, no, yeah, we uh, respect One Hive a whole lot. It was just, we knew this finals would come down to this. It's, it's, living, up, it's living up to the hype. So, That's awesome. Um, this is going to be a crazy last 16 minutes and 16 seconds. <laughs> and, but who's uh, counting, right? Yeah. Perfect. So in action earlier today, while we wait for these lives, we're going to check out Cass from One Hive. He's one of their Town Hall 11s, and he is bringing uh, an attack against Roman here from Fake WGM. Uh, a solid bowler attack, and he's going to be picking up the three-star here, bringing that queen. He's got a great funnel uh, working for him here. You see that widespread on his troops, working his way through, and a triple jump here is something that's very commonly done at the Town Hall 11 level because you basically have a built-in spell with your Grand Warden, able to ward off all of that incoming damage. So the triple jump to really get those troops up and through the base in a timely fashion. Ooh, excellent ability from the Grand Warden here, keeping all of his troops nice and healthy as the bulk of the interior of this base starts to try to fire away at them. Inferno Tower goes down from a massive hit from these bowlers, and it's looking like this is going to go in Cass's favor, the one hive player trying to get this third star. It's getting awfully close toward the end here, but we still see a couple of healthy heroes uh, up in the center area of this base. The king just goes down, uh, but fasten your seatbelts, folks, because I think that this attack is going to go all the way. We are going to be uh, bouncing over to Cass once again. Who would have known that we would be doing two Cass hits in a row? He's going to be going in live against DM, a.k.a. the hands. This is an absolute must-have for one hive. They cannot fail this attack. Bowler's starting to tear into the Elixir Collectors at the edge, taking that trash out. The Witch is getting a nice skelly spawn in there, trying to keep the tanking uh, nice and healthy. Cass is going to send the golem up on top to keep uh, these bowlers 
well positioned uh, behind him and try to jump into the base there with that spell. First target might be this Inferno Tower. Taking that out will be very important as uh, Cass wants to make sure that his troops stay nice and healthy. Grand Warden in tow is going to be able to provide a lot of defensive support here as the Rage spell is dropped. Power Bang, what are we looking at? This is a really strong push on that left side of the base. The right top side, I don't know if it's going as far as he would have liked. It is kind of petering out over there, but maybe, just maybe, these bowlers will get, uh, you know, free from the cannon here and start marching around. There they go. Starting to march around, but some really good action down here on the bottom. Bowlers, golems, heroes, everything looking good. Inferno Tower down, so many bowlers left open, but it looks like they're going to go outside the walls here to focus on the Town Hall. Queen still has her ability left, chilling on the top side of the base. She is kind of off on her own right now. This has got to come together here for him, but I do think he's got enough troops up right now where he should be able to finish this one out. So many bowlers left alive right now, and uh, the Queen still with her ability at that. DM, a.k.a. The Hands, has certainly got a Tenacious D, but Cast the One Hive player is a Tenacious B. Buzzing around over on the right side of the base here. Looks like he will be able to deconstruct the remainder of these defenses and wipe out this base for a clean three-star. Looking solid here for Cass. He's only got a few buildings left to go that mean anything. There goes the Tesla. Now is for the Wizard Tower. This is going to be a three-star. Let's hear it for One Hive. <laughs> All right, let's talk to Pero really quickly while we wait for the next live attack. Pero, my friend, your buddy Cass just went in here, fellow Town 11, taking yeah. out uh, DM here. S saw that. I and, was watching uh, it in what, game. What do you think? Are you proud of your boy? Oh, yes, I am. Cass has always been one of our best Town Hall 11s, and, you know, when he sets his eyes on the base, he can do it fresh, no problem, no need for any scouts. So, and it's so That's amazing. Look into that camera right over there and, and tell Cass that you, that you love him. Love you, Cass. All right. Yeah, Stay with us. Beautiful. That was a moment. We just had a moment, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So good stuff there from One Hive. Getting the three star to take care of business against DM, a.k.a. The Hands. And it's looking like the gap's narrowing just a little bit. We're sitting at 105 stars right now for FW. We've got 99 for One Hive. Things are narrowing up a bit. 12 minutes left to go in the war. Five attacks left for One Hive. Three attacks left for faked WGM. This is anybody's game at this point. Couple of Town Hall 11 attacks left for fake WGM. Those are going to be the heaviest hitting, but I think that we've got another one of them starting up right now. We Dofine do. from fake WGM moving in against Chris. He's here in the studio right now, hoping that he can hold on to those stars. Dofine from uh, fake WGM taking on Chris is what he mentioned. And again, we're seeing a lot of Boulder Witch action. This seems to be an attack strategy of uh, choice right now. A really solid uh, strategy, and it's also shown some really good results so far. Just chipping away at the edges here, trying to clear out the trash and prevent uh, his troops from getting distracted. Nice funnel uh, from Dauphine as he moves in against Chris here. Two golems to block for this massive ground-based push. The Town Hall 11s rarely have much difficulty taking out uh, the Town Hall 10. And uh, with the jump spell in the center here, you see him uh, applying most of the pressure down the center. It is a nice little bit of a fork here as a few of uh, the witches and bowlers making their way toward the top. But the primary thrust here getting raged up, going for that Inferno Tower, taking it down. A big push still left in the center. Power Bang, what are we looking at? And we're looking at a jump spell right in the center of that base, opening up the back side here. You love that Grand Warden ability, mm. nullifying the giant bombs Open on the first the Inferno side. set. Really good work on that from Dauphine. He's going to be taking out the Inferno here in just a moment. Down it goes. We've got the Witches with healers on them. Over on this right side, this is looking much better here on this attempt on Chris's base. We've got Bowlers and Witches on the left side as well. Guys, this base is doomed to fall. Another successful attack from faked WGM. This is looking really solid. Queen still with her ability left, and that is going to do it for this base. One minute, 43 seconds left. This is uh, a guaranteed three-star. Just going in for the final cleanup kill here. Dauphine has got it in the bag. All three heroes still alive, still has an ability left on his queen and a swag uh, wizard that he could deploy at any minute if he chose to do so. Plenty of troops left. Excellent attack from Dofi. There it is. <laughs> FW putting another three on the board, and that is 108 stars now to 102 for one hive. Both clans matching each other with a three star at the exact same moment. Nice life taking out Jeffrey over on the one hive side. But guys, we're down to the final nine minutes, 50 seconds of war. It's probably pretty important that we start getting some in-studio live attacks going so we actually get them in on time. One hive, do you guys have a representative ready to take the stage to try to secure a three? 
go. Yes, we do. Maddie J. Maddie J. Make your way to the stage, my friend. One Hive still has four rounds left in their chamber, but this is going to be the heaviest shot of them all. Matty J moving in, attempting to get a three star here. The Town Hall 11 player has got plenty of experience That's going right. up against these bases. A general for One Hive. We'll see if he's earned his rank. That's right. He's going to be bringing that gun to the knife fight. So here we go. We've <laughs> got uh, Matty J getting ready. That One Hive logo adorning his lapel there. Beautiful sweatshirts provided by Supercell here. Gotta love both the clans all geared up for their team spirit. I'm kind of jealous, I gotta say. I'm liking the gear, man. I wanna I know, get some looks, of that stuff. Looks pretty fresh. Absolutely. So here we go. We've got Matty J going in live now, taking on Wiz. Wiz gonna be talking on a little bit of crap from the other side of the studio. Uh, here we go. Matty J, though, number two versus number 17. And again, he's got the miners, like we talked about before. The corners funneled, taken care of. You can see exactly where he's gonna drop those miners in so that they go straight into the core of the base to take out the defenses that matter. Matty G pointing directly at Wiz, looking him square in the eye and says, you're going down, Buckaroo. Returns right. his gaze to the eye uh, as he gets ready to finish off this next wave of the attack. Bowlers in the bottom compartment trying to make their way in. A healthy Inferno Tower Lots still up, though, as these miners are starting to make their way in. Skeletons providing a little bit of distraction. Bomb goes off, a giant one at that. But it looks like uh, the attack from Matty J survives. Power bang, what are we looking at? This is, uh, this is looking solid so far. Uh, from Matty J. This is looking really, really good. The, the miners working their way through, staying together as a big group, and those heal spells when they're in a group like that, while it may be a little bit slower to get from defense to defense, they are all being healed up right now, except for the five being targeted by the Inferno Tower. Yes, but as you see, as they go underground, the Inferno switches targets to the other group, so they're constantly alternating heals back and forth. That means that nothing is dying in effect. So Matty J is going to be securing another three star here for one hive, making the score just that much closer. Guys, a minute and 40 seconds left. Matty J has already cleared all of the defenses in the base. Let's hear it for him. Matty J walking back victorious to the one hive side. Three stars in the bag. The great thing about those Myers, they don't take any damage while they're underground. Being able to trigger bombs or force a reset of the Inferno Tower works very well for him. Matty J, nicely done there, man. Do you have any comments on that destructive performance you just delivered for us? Uh, no, it was pretty uh, straightforward base. It was fresh. We couldn't find a 10v10 plan for it, so uh, we did it a dip, and these guys have had Loon in their CC the whole time, so I All took right. the chance. and. Got it going. We got another attack going right now. This is live in studio. He didn't make it to the podium because time is of the essence right now. We need to see the result of this attack to see how things progress moving forward. Atoma619 is in. Can we get a camera dialed in on him to watch him make this attack? We've got one jump spell in the bag. All kinds of bowlers ready to make their approach at the Inferno Towers. Atoma taking on Thomas here. This attack is crucial if One Hive wants to get back into this one. Certainly needs that three star and he's going to be working hard for it here. The Town 10 v 10 is a difficult one indeed, but he's going in hard. Jump spell in the center there to provide those bowlers another opportunity to make their way toward that Inferno Tower. A little bit of splash damage as they start to knock it down, getting awfully close and getting the finishing blow, but the giant bomb's about to blow up and finish them off. Skeletons popping out over on the left side. We've still got a little bit of a force going toward the top of the base as the Barbarian King is getting a little bit of work done here, distracted by the skeletons and moving kind of all around world? with a little bit of a do -si do dance there. Power bang, I think he's in uh. trouble though. The queen has gone down, guys. That was uh, what we were looking to get through. Unfortunately, the queen's gone down. The king can't figure out where he's going. Uh, but ultimately, he's not going to be able to take out all of this by himself. This attack coming to an end very shortly. It did look promising there for a moment, but it's not going to be enough to get the three star against Thomas. Good try there from Atoma. Uh, I like the plan. It was trying to clean up using the same exact attack that uh, someone used earlier on this. But that is, uh, is going to do it for now for Atoma. Good try, my friend. Now, one hive had actually managed to already get the second star on that base, so didn't uh, wind up missing out on too much there. Wanted the third one, but Powerbang, I'm actually quite excited to report that it is a draw right now between one hive and fake WGM. It's a 108 to 108 dead heat. Two attacks left for both clans, and this could not be any closer. That's exactly right. We are a 108, 108. We had an attack come in while Atoma was live. We've got a tie, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it. 
We are heading into the final four minutes of war. And boy, oh boy, this is as close as anyone could have expected it would be. One Hive just got a one star Atoma's attack wrapped up. They have one attack left over. Let's go ahead and send Philip to the stage. We can actually. This, this is chaos going into the final four minutes here. We want to make sure that Philip has enough time to actually get in uh, his attack, but we are sitting at 108, 100 in tape. And Phil, Philip, don't don't rush. Take your time. Do the planning that you need to do, man. We'll uh, left. we'll take the time that we uh, we yeah. need to take. So we are looking at 108, 108 ties, 78 attacks in for FW right now. 79 for one hive. It does look like uh, we've got Philip with one left, and it looks like we also have Vengeance uh, in the studio as well, I believe, uh, for an attack. And his earlier one was a three star. So a couple coming in at the last second right now, and it does look like one hive. All that's left for them is K Wei, who is an absolute all star Town Hall 10 attacker. So, definitely advantage for uh, FW here. K Wei is going to try to get it done, though. This is uh, possibly the deciding attack right now, though, for Philip from Fake WGM. Moving in against Maddie J. We saw him earlier. Philip is going to send in a dominating force, looking to get the three star. Now he's going to start off with the town hall in the left corner there. This base has only been one starred so far, so the three star here would actually be worth two for fake WGM and be able to put them at a dominant 110. This would definitely be enough for them to get the victory. Philip trying to clinch it for his team is going to start off with a massive bowler witch attack out the top left. What are we looking at, Power Bang? We've got that Bowler Witch strategy at it. Again, the funneling is fantastic. We've got the uh, bowlers on the bottom side, though. It doesn't look like he's going to need those with all of the defenses there being accessible from the core. It all depends on where he drops his second jump spell here. It looks like he's going to lead them uh, through the wall by beating on it here. Probably a smart move. And once they're in this compartment, pretty much anything is fair game. The queen needs to redirect. She does. And here we go, pushing their way through. Rage spell is down. Bombs are being triggered. Chaos is happening. And we still have two abilities for the heroes to push into the backside of the base. King and Queen, the checkmate appears to be imminent. Philip is finishing off the final Inferno Tower in that base right now with that King ability being activated, tearing into the final compartment. The gold storage is not looking too healthy at all. Philip from fake WGM is tearing this base apart. He still has quite a few defenses in the bottom of this structure, and the heroes up top are having a little bit of difficulty making their way through, but they've got plenty of time. One 30 remains for them to circle this base and to finish this thing off. Looking for the 100% three star. Luckily, the base, that the only defense right now that is inaccessible from the outside of the wall. Actually, he may be able to get it here if he sneaks by the mortar is this air defense, but it can't do any damage. So this is looking like he's uh, all wrapped up with this attack. This is looking really, really strong right now for Philip. We are, uh, wow, this is, this is awesome. So they're going to add another two stars to their total for 110, it looks like. And we still have stuff happening in the background as we speak right now. So great stuff here from Philip, securing the three star. Absolutely crucial attack, and we'll be able to finish this thing off. Power Bang, I know that we've got another couple going on in the background. Let's congratulate Philip on his excellent performance here and try to find Let's those hear final it for attacks. <laughs> nice work, Philip. All right, so we are going to be trying to catch Vengeance here live. This is the final attack of the war. FW, look at them. They're pushing their way through. Uh, we are working their way to the uh, the last little section of this base. Two minutes left in the raid, but it doesn't look like it's going to be uh, enough on this attack. FW is uh, thinning out here. That's right, facing a lot of difficulty power bang. The witches are finally making their way onto that left side cannon, but it seems like there's still plenty of defenses left for Hung Sport to be able to hold on here. Fake WGM trying to get another three star onto their total here. They are ahead over one hive with two uh, stars, but it hasn't yet been finished off. Looks like the final troop has gone down. And with that two star, I think that we've seen the last attack in this war. Faked WGM looking dominant. Power bang. How's it going? Oh, it's going fantastic, guys. And it, with those attacks to finish things up, holy cow, we have ourselves a winner. It has been determined. The scores have come in. We are looking at your first ever CWL champion, it's going to be faked WGM.
emerge victorious, but let's hear it for our finalists, One Hive. One Hive, you have been finalists twice here, joining some of the best clans and certainly one of the best clans of your own. Lord Byron, it's my pleasure to present to you the second place Silver Pekka Trophy. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's pointy, to be careful. <laughs> so congratulations to One Hive. These guys are definitely deserving to be here. They fought their way through a very difficult playoff schedule, co overcoming the odds when a lot of people thought they might not. So congratulations once again to One Hive. But the clan of the hour, your first time CWL season three champions, Fake WGM. <laughs> The Golden Pekka Trophy is Philip from Fake WGM coming up with a clutch three star attack in the waning moments of the war. Philip, was this war like any you've ever experienced? No, this was amazing. Uh, <laughs> I feel a lot of things right now, but uh, I want to say hats off to One Hive. You guys are amazing, and uh, you deserve to be here. And uh, great war to you guys. That is amazing. Let's hear it for both clans, guys. Both clans played wonderfully. Your final score, 110, 108, I believe. I don't have the stats right in front of me. But the victor is Faked WGM. These guys are your Season 3 CWL champions. So for those of us here on set, I'd like to say first off, thank you to Supercell for hosting the CWL Finals. Massive, massive thank you to them. Thank you to the fans. You guys are amazing for watching us, for caring about us. I know the clans appreciate it. Thank Thank you to all of the teams and players that make up the entire league, the entire organization, all of the other leagues. Oh, baby, what do we got here? That's thank what I'm talking about. And well. thank you to the admins. Awesome These guys are amazing. The CWL admins organizing everything for seemingly millions of hours. That's going to do it, though, for the CWL Season 3 Finals. I've got myself a cake. Woo! For myself, Power Bay. Woody, you can check both of us out on YouTube. Make sure you guys go drop a subscription. That's going to do it for the Season 3 Finals. Fake WGM, your champions, everybody. We'll see you later.